couple of that guy. So thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. I don't know how we're gonna start it off. Yeah, what's up everybody? Muse Me TV. Already having some technical difficulties. <laughs> what's up, man? Nothing much, buddy. Um fucking we just got done doing a podcast with Caleb Mulkey. Shout out Mulkey Comedy one more time just to give him some extra plugs. Um we're live though, so if you want to go ahead and share oh, it and yeah, stuff, hey, well, let's go ahead and share that stuff. Well well, sure. well I'm starting to like talk and stuff um yeah. let me tell you something about world war Two. that was actually a very bad war it was one of the one of the could it be one of the worst wars out there until we hit the cold war then it got worse what's going on this isn't working you're looking at me like you're scared no i'm looking at the computer like i'm scared look yeah that's because i know it's because it's too hot yeah okay thank you shit i don't even know how to that. share this shit oh, on wait. facebook I thought I was a little smart. Go to the second camera right away. Okay, so how do I... Fuck. Well, that sucks. Two podcasts is too much. Well, the, the, the humidity in this room is too much. <laughs> I don't even know how to share it. Yeah, just keep it on main cam, I guess. Oh, well, I don't even know how to share it, so... What? Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, man, you know what's funny is that with the photography stuff and things I do... I'm not a fucking technical person at all. At all? No, not really. I mean, I am, right, to a point. Like, a lot of times people tell me, like, well, you know, how much editing do you do to your photos, and what do you use? And I'm like, I use, like, the most simplest Photoshop program ever, and, like, barely do... Just unscrew it, and then screw it back in. Barely do anything when it comes to editing. Like, uh. usually it's pretty close to how it looked like in the camera. Um, occasionally, you know, it might not be, but I usually won't touch something if it's not. And it's usually because I screwed up on... <laughs> lighting or something yeah like is, you, know. you know your aperture or something's exactly. fucked up yeah i yeah. did photography for a little bit and my essential goal was if i can make the picture look good on the camera yeah then i don't have to edit right exactly and and i'll do i do and it's it's more of like a this looks a little crisper to me this looks a little you know what i mean outside of that and it's funny as me and a, a bunch of the photographers i know i stopped touching my face um you know we'll talk about some of the people that kind of like are on turbo when it comes to like editing a picture uh, you're like you don't have to go that far like it's a great picture sometimes and it just like you know what i mean and um there's a couple a couple there's one this one cat um he does a uh, oh man i forget what his damn uh, his name's what his uh handle is but he started getting really taking really good pictures but the problem is like he started by he was kind of really editing them so i just kind of like reached out to him one day i was just like man i really like what you're doing i was like but you don't have to edit it so much you really don't. And so, like, he started doing a couple pictures and then messaged me later. He's like, man, I appreciate the advice. I just see the difference and the reaction it's getting because it's not just, like, this blown-out picture because he found the, you know, that's what some people do when they start out. You know, you blow up, a pic you get a picture, and you edit the shit out of it, and some of your friends like it, and then you think, oh. I'm good. Yeah, oh, check it out. Like, all nine of my friends like my picture. I'm a photographer now, and it's like, that's not the case, you know. I love how you take that avenue, though. Like, you did it because you just wanted to do it, right? Yeah. How did you start doing photography? Well, kind of what started it was um, I, I've been in the lowrider community, like, since I was 15. I've been around them since I was a kid. I'm originally from El Paso, Texas. Okay. That's and, a big uh, thing out there? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, it, I don't look it, but I'm half Mexican and half white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of my family was in Mexico and stuff. and um, So I was always drawn to it. Uh, my dad had this friend. I still remember the first time I saw one. Um, he had this friend he was buying some stuff from. And uh, we go to his house. This guy's got this nice Corvette and some other stuff. And, and I still think to this day it was like the 63 Impala on like Supreme slammed with like dingle balls hanging from the roof. And I was like five. And I just still remember it, this purple car so vaguely. And I just like, I want that. And uh, we were always into cars. My dad used to uh, work on race cars and so forth. And my, my little brother as well. And I just went the other way. And I started like doing car stereo systems, hydraulics and stuff. And I was like 14, 15 years old. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I've been around it forever. Right. So um, 
I started building cars when I was uh, 16. I got my first car that I started building. It was a Cutlass. So I started being a part of that community for a long time. And I always had cars and built cars and so forth or projects or whatever. Um, I got away from it for a while. So this was kind of like my way to kind of, I started going back to show. I started getting into taking pictures again. I used to take pictures back then, but just kind of like bullshit. You know? Yeah, just stuff um, to get your yeah, feet just, wet. You know, just like, oh, I've got a camera. I took some pictures. I'd get some comments here once. So I thought they were pretty cool, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was an auto camera, you know, got down low. Every picture looked good. You know, it just you're just learning, right? It's the you beginning of it You have to twist it, it. I would just take it off and let yeah. it cool down. That's probably what it is. What is that? It. That's uh, so that's the multicam. Oh, that's what swaps it. Yeah. Oh, okay. But again, it's hot as fuck, and I touched it, and I'm just like, Jesus Christ! I'm just burning my equipment at this <laughs> point, man. <laughs> but um, so anyway, so that's that's kind of when I got back into it is I started taking pictures again, and I started going to car shows. And this again. was all still in El Paso. Uh, no, this is here. I've I lived in out New Mexico most of my life. Okay, so you I were just here. born out there. Yeah, I was born out there. Um. We moved here when I was like eleven ish. Okay. I guess. So I've spent most of my life here. All right. Um, but um but yeah, no, I just uh it was kind of my way to get back into the in the community by just going to shows taking pictures. And you know, I still knew a bunch of people from it and then it just kinda turned into more than I expected it to. Uh-huh. Right. And I had some uh some really good mentors. I uh, there's a guy named Travis Ruiz and then uh, Corey Ringel, which is Travis's fisheye photography. And Corey Ringel's uh, double barrel photography. Uh, shout out. And, yeah, absolutely. They they both helped me out so much. Like, in just little, you know, at first I was just, you know, like I, I kind of met Corey because I used to actually help my dad with a dragster for a little while. And uh. he used to take pictures at the drag races. So um, I'd help him work on it. And I kind of met him there. And he knew people I knew. Like his uh, his brother-in-law is like my one of my best friend's brother through some bullshit. Yeah. And um, so, like, we all kind of always knew people around each other. Um, so I, I don't know, just to kind of start him, I'd start seeing him at shows and he would just give me like advice or he'd see me post a picture and like, Hey man, you know, when you're doing this, do that or stand back here, or, you know, just little things, you know, and the same thing with Travis, you know, and they just kind of like to the point where, I mean, heck I've helped Corey with flyers. He makes, he makes the, all these low rider flyers for the shows and stuff. The really nice ones are stumps he does. And there's been times when he uses even some of my pictures for stuff in other States. And to me, that's like a hell, huge compliment because yeah. You know, these are guys I looked up to when I started taking pictures. So, yeah. So, that's just how I got into it, man. I just wanted to be back in that car community that I've always been a part of because I had draw, gotten away from it for a couple of years. And, you know, they, those guys love pictures of their cars. Oh, yeah. That's what they love. Yeah. They're just literally yeah. waiting. They don't want to pay for them. But yeah, they, they the literally <laughs> want to have that picture. And, and that's what's cool, too. It's like all these pictures that you have taken, you can probably submit that. I don't know. Have you submitted it to, like, Lowrider Magazine uh, or shit like that? Well, not Lowrider Magazine, but I've actually been uh, worked with a couple of magazines. Okay. So um, I, my first article came out in December of 2021, uh, a magazine out of uh, Japan called One Low. They had a special edition called One Way Magazine that came out in December of this last year, and I was published in that. Oh, shit. And then uh, there was a second magazine that I had actually started working with a couple years back, um, but the, they just delayed their second issue for so long. It finally came out, and I'm in it, but we kind of had a falling out, me and the magazine, so they didn't credit me for my work on it. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. So it's been, I don't know, I'm not talking too much about it yet because I'm kind of trying to see what I can do work out the kinks and shit like that I mean it's not like they're gonna go print more right but the fact that they hadn't even acknowledged that they fucked up or I don't think they I, I'm pretty sure it was on purpose you know uh, at, this, at this point it wasn't on the article I wasn't listed as one of the photographers in the magazine at all but your picture's there it's my picture I wrote the story it's my stuff oh shit yeah it's kind of a sore subject with me right now but it's it's it'll get worked out one way or the other and either you know, one way where I get an apology or another way when I'm in California. Is yeah. that is that one of those things, though, that you just submit it and they just take your thing? Or did they know kind of about oh, you already? Yeah, yeah no, they, we started working together. Yeah. Um, I was actually in Arizona. I had already set up this shoot prior to even working with them um, because uh, it was actually the number two lowrider of the year that year. So there was the guy who won first and he won second, which is a big deal. Like, yeah. I mean, he was up against an old way, a car that was way over a million dollar car. Damn. Yeah, easily. You know, I mean, you'd be surprised what's in these cars. And, um, and yeah, no, he was second place. And I just kind of reached out because I was going to be out there shooting a show anyway for myself. It was before I even started working with anybody. And uh, he was like, yeah. So then the magazine kind of came along. Uh, a friend of mine, his name's Jose, he, uh, he had been seeing my work and he started working with them first. And he kind of reached out to me like, hey, I've just, they want me to find someone else. I've just been watching you. Let's meet up and talk. And, 
that's kind of how that transpired. You know what I mean? His name was uh, Jose Lucero. Okay. Um, Nuevo Style Photography is what uh-huh. he goes by. Um, and, and so that's just where that started, man. He kind of brought me in, and we went to Arizona together. Well, not really together, but out there at the same time. And it was when I first worked with him and sent, submitted stuff to them and so forth. And it, it was all right. You know, it was, it was started off okay. Um, and I just started going to different places and shooting for him for a while. Oh, shit. But uh, it just it took so long, and we kind of had a falling out over some stuff. Like I said, I have, I'm not really talking about too much live, but I will eventually whenever I get everything else settled. Yeah, because you never know if it can have some ramifications coming exactly. back at you and stuff, too. I say the wrong thing, and now I can't get anything or yeah. something happens with this trying to get credited on my work. I don't know. So, But once it's all settled, you know what I mean? I usually won't. I'm not going to let that stuff just keep flying the way it is. That makes sense, too, because, <laughs> I mean, it's your work. Right, exactly. And. You know, it, it just even even a, a, a message on their social media acknowledging it would yeah. be one thing. Um, another photographer that works with them actually was telling me that he got pretty, you know, upset with them about the fact that they wouldn't even do that, knowing that it was screwed up. So there was literally a discussion outside once I was out of the situation um, where it was discussed that he, you know, you should at least say something, and they were like we're not going to no damn so i mean because i get in reality legally they would be admitting fault the second they did yeah and then that just that just helps you out in that sense too right so it could be that or it could be just because fuck me you know i don't know yeah it sucks well i mean i see that like pretty much like in any kind of industry that you're trying to like work at like if you even try to do it with like making music and stuff like that you know submit a song or even have your song played in something and then all of a sudden you don't get as much credit as you can or yeah fucking but photography is like totally a different level like oh it's different i mean people can steal your shit so fast yeah you know? especially i see that you do put um watermarks, watermarks. Yeah. yeah i mean it's i mean a lot of times you can just crop it out or copy and you know uh, make it go away i mean they can i'm sure people do yeah i do that all the time you <laughs> know what I mean? so it's 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 more of like the people who actually respect what i'm doing see it they see who did it okay because reality is if they're gonna steal your shit they're gonna steal it. yeah you know um most people have the respect not to <laughs> but some people don't give a shit. Yeah, they just—they're like, "This is a good picture of me." I just wish it wasn't. Right. Well, and and I've never had a problem. If anybody's ever contacted me, I'm like, "Hey, man, can I print your picture? Can I this?" And if it's one that I have put online, I'm always like, "Hey, thanks for asking." Yeah. You know what I mean? Just the fact that you asked is a big deal because most people don't. Yeah, or the photo credit thing. Right. Like they want to post it on their media, and you're right. just like, "Can I?" And they yeah. ask you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna—I'll credit you, or I'll, yeah, absolutely. You know, and and uh, some people just don't. You know, whatever. And it, you know, hey. Everything comes back to everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's just how, you know, it is. You that's know? A, that's yeah. a good philosophy to have. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're just trying to, like, for it's not even for you at this point either, right? You're yeah. just trying to put out your work for other people. Right, right. To show, you know, I look at photography like this, you know, and it's and, and I I really capture, capture these moments all over this state or other states and other communities and so forth. You know, I got this picture of this car up in Colorado when I was up shooting a cruise about two years ago. Well, like three months later, the car burned down in a in a garage fire. Oh, uh. gone. just gone, completely gone. And so I got a message from the guy's son is like, hey, man, I noticed you were out shooting this cruise. We lost the car. My dad had this car for like ever since they were kids and it's gone, you know. And, I, and at the time, they were actually pictures I had submitted to the magazine. So I couldn't technically really give them to anybody. So now that everything kind of fell apart, <laughs> I found them. And I was like, hey, I found those pictures and I sent them. They were like. Here it is, like these pictures of this car they will never have again. Yeah. You know, or moments or people or whatever, you know. I mean, anything, any moment you catch will be there forever. Yeah. You know, I mean, as you know now, I've been recently shooting comedy shows. Like, that's actually really fun. It's something new, getting like these stage moments and, and whatnot. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's just, I got Jess Wood the other day um, doing this really funny bit that I won't talk about, <laughs> but she is just like, looks like she's headbanging on stage. You know what I mean? Her hair. Blow job. Yeah. yeah you know I wasn't going to say. I mean, yeah. come watch Jess Wood. She's funny as hell. Yeah. Come see comedy. You know guys. what I mean? Yeah. Hey, man, you know what? Most people don't give New Mexico comedy credit, man. And it's unfortunate. And I can say this because I've been on the music side before. You know, 20 years ago, we did music. You know what I mean? Me and uh, this guy named Demon. His name's Mark. He's actually in the car scene now. Okay. Me and him built a studio at my house. Uh, we started recording. We had a couple songs on the radio at the time. We did shows and whatnot. And, and back then, you know, we'd put these shows together. As a matter of fact, this guy uh, I worked with, his name was Alex, Alex Chavez. He goes by KYD. We named him the kid. And, uh, you know, we'd do these shows, and you'd put all these people on these shows, and everybody would come, and the first, as soon as the first, set, first group went on, 
them and all their homies would leave. Yeah. Then the next group would go on and them and all the people they brought would leave. And before you know it, it's last last person of the night and it's all the people you invite and everybody else just takes off. Like uh. why not hang out and see what's coming next? Like support the scene, not just your homie. Not yeah. just oh my homie does hip hop or my homie does comedy or he's a this or a that. And and I'll, I feel like Albuquerque or maybe just New Mexico in a whole has kind of always been that way and it sucks. So I was actually was kind of scared to get into the comedy here because of that. You thought that same aspect would be in comedy. And I and I found I kind of found that myself too is like when I first started I was like a musician and I played the same thing, playing yeah. shows, getting your getting people hyped, but then it was just your crowd. Yeah. And then you see the next band and you're like, "Fuck, these guys have way more fans." Like yeah. imagine if they saw my set, yeah. would I get these fans and stuff, but they right. just didn't have that mentality to stay for everybody or just support the whole scene. Right. Right. I mean, there's a few people that do, but for the most part, they don't. Yeah. They're just there to support who they're there to see or for whatever reason. And um, so, yeah, I was afraid of that with comedy, actually. I was afraid to kind of get in the scene if it was that kind of because I didn't want to be a part of that kind of scene again. Yeah. You know, photography is kind of like that sometimes. There's a few photographers out there. I've seen so many places and I am usually the first person to be like, hey, what's up? I'm so and so. What's your this? What's your that? I'm a pretty friendly person. And. And they'll just ignore, they'll not even acknowledge you sometimes. Oh, sure. But it's very few and in between. It's not a lot. Yeah. Most, for the most part, most of us get along well. Most of us talk to each other outside of some little drama here and there. But and I think that's the shitty part about it too. Is just like it's a, uh, it's like an ego thing or something. Right. Where they're just like, oh well, you know, it's not that good. Or I mean, it's the same thing with comedy. Like yeah. if you go on stage and you do one joke and it bombs. They probably ain't gonna listen to the whole set. No, no, they're no. not. You gotta make them laugh right yeah, away. Yeah, <laughs> that's so crazy how that happens. Right. What made you get into the comedy scene? So like, <laughs> I would, because I think I saw you for your second set, and that was second one ever. Yeah. yeah that, no, no. No, no. Which one was it? Didn't you do a set at Lizard Tail? No. So that was my first set here, at Lizard Tail, like in December or something. Okay. That was the first set I ever did here in Albuquerque, oh. and I ate shit. Like, okay. I went in there like just thinking, oh, I know I've done this stuff a few times. I usually will listen to like my recordings before I get somewhere, and I wasn't. I had a friend with me. I was just talking, bullshitting, not really paying attention, and so I get there and I just felt like I just couldn't believe how bad I did. I was so mad at myself that I finally came into comedy in Albuquerque, and I just like didn't even prepare. Like uh. I went up like an asshole, you know. I was like didn't respect it, you know, or some shit, you know. So like the next time I went up was at Revel. I just had. Saw there was a Revel open mic. I heard, hey, that's usually a good mic to go to. So I said, all right, I'll just go. You know, so I went up and it went decent. And then afterwards, I, I you know, asked Jamar. I was like, hey, man, you know, it's my first time you seeing me. Like, what do you think? You know, he's like, yeah, good jokes. And he kind of told me, like, hey, some stuff to work on. But he was pretty friendly, you know. So I thought it was cool. But um, so actually what so what got me started in it was I man, you know how it is. You make all your friends laugh, right? Yeah. Well, you're, you're I the was, funny one. <laughs> right. Well, it was I was always the one that got more than just my friends to laugh. It was everybody around or to the point where I, you know, we'd be at dinner and stuff and, er, you know, the friends would be laughing, their stomachs would be hurting, like cheeks, you know, whatever. And they'd be like, you should do comedy. You should do comedy all the time. So uh, for work again, so I'm a, I'm a territory manager for a forklift company. So I actually travel for work. And I uh, go to the Four Corners area a lot. So I happened to just be in Durango, staying there that night. And I was downtown Durango walking around. And uh, I hear this bar, hear some music. I'm going to go check this out. Some girl playing an acoustic guitar. And I love acoustic guitar, you know. Go in there, sit down, listen to her. And uh, she finishes her song and says, all right, everybody. Hey, after I'm done with this next song, there's a comedy show later tonight. Why don't you hang out and watch it? So I'm like, fuck yeah. I love comedy. Man, I've loved comedy since I was a kid. I watch... Richard Pryor on Sunset Strip when I was like five or six years old. Okay. You know what I mean? Like Eddie Murphy stuff. I've always loved comedy. And uh, so I was like, well, of course I'm going to watch this, you know. Let's try Let's check it out. Yeah. So so she finishes up and she's and I saw so I walk up to her like, hey, what time does that comedy show start? So she waves over at this guy and she's like, hey, this guy wants to sign up for the open mic. Uh, that's not what I said. No, the exact <laughs> reaction. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what I said. I don't No, no, no. I just you heard, you know. And so they bring me over. And uh, so there's this guy named Brian, Dr. Brian. I forget what his last name is, man. He just happens to be staying in Durango this time. And then I can't remember who the other guy was there. And so like, well, have you ever done comedy before? I was like, no. And, and he's like, well, you know, have you thought about it? I was like, yeah, it's kind of funny, blah, blah, blah. People say I should. And like, well, then do it. Do you know anybody here? I was like, well, no, I don't. It's like, right, just put your name down. Come back in an hour and do it. Like, what's it going to hurt? Nobody knows you here. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
so I was gonna, I was looking for something to eat at the time because obviously you know I don't have meals. Uh, uh, well, I guess <laughs> so, this is a second breakfast. You know what I mean? Like I'd already eaten twice that afternoon, but I still needed one more. You know, mm-hmm. so I go to this this restaurant and grab pizza, and I had been putting ideas in my phone for a while, just <clears throat> <coughs> just thoughts, ideas, whatever. And so I'm sitting there going through them, and I'm like, "Fuck this! I'm not gonna go up." I don't even. I'm, I'm, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like I have stupid ideas on my phone, but that's it. Yeah. Like, I don't have nothing prepared. I don't even know what the fuck I'm gonna say when I get up there. So I finish pay and I leave. And I'm walking out. And my truck is literally parked like the next street over from the, where they're having this comedy night. And I'm walking up, and here comes that Dr. Brian dude walking down. Hey, what's up, man? Puts his arm around. You ready, man, for your first time? This that. Basically takes me back into the. Uh, he's like, let's go back. <laughs> Revolving doors. Yeah. <laughs> like, like he was barking me in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but and I was like, oh fuck, you know. And I was like, well, fuck it. I guess I'm gonna do it. I don't. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. Um. So then they're like, well, you'll go like fourth or fifth. I'm like, cool. Sounds good. A little right? bit of prepared. Trying to you prepare. Know, I could kind of see somebody do it, right? So the host gets on. And uh, he gets on, gets off. Next first person comes on. She does all right, and then comes off. And then they're like, "And this guy says he's never done comedy before. I guess we'll find out uh, next day." Just Cardo Mad. I'm like, "Oh fuck!" So I'm like trying to push record on my phone because I'm like, you know, I listen to podcasts all the time. So I'm like, they were saying record all your sets yeah. and all this shit. So I push record. I go up, and I'm I'm just up there, and I just go with my first thought, you know, which was uh. What did I say? Oh, I said, uh, you ever masturbate so much that your iPad won't even look at you anymore? Was my opening joke. Okay. Terrible fucking joke. Nothing? No. No, no. You got to laugh. Okay. I was like, I was like, I go walk around, show it to customers, and it works fine. I get back to the room, shuts off. Like, it knows what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Like, I walk around customers, and they, and like, thinking about what I did with it the night before, and they're just, like, touching it and all this shit, you know? And uh. People start laughing, you know? And I just start going into, like, uh, the, that rape fantasy bit was something I wrote down years ago, which you've heard, which has caused some drama here uh. and there. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and then this other bit uh, was a story about a, a, a guy I worked with that got into a road rage and sitting on the way to work one morning. Oh, shit. So I just knew those, and I always had these ideas about these things, so I just went off on them. And you, you've always thought, like, this is funny. Like, yeah, this I, would be this funny. Like, what my idea behind the rape fantasy thing, which obviously sounds terrible as fuck when you say it that yeah, way. Yeah, even when you just start off with the rape fantasy. <laughs> yeah, just saying that, period, is like, oh, I get it, you know. But um, it was uh, it was just an idea I had that, like, the reversal of it, you know. Yeah. And so uh, I went, I just said it. There was this guy in the middle of stage, arms crossed, and I was staring at him the whole time. I'm shaking like like this, and uh, I see him crack a smile, and that's it. Uh, I'm like, I just fucking ate a bag of dicks, like uh, bad, right? So I'm getting off, and the host, hey man, that was a good set. And I'm like, the fuck did you watch, man? You know, because I didn't hear nobody laugh. I was totally just zoned out to it all. It did nothing existed to me except for that dude with his fucking arms crossed in front of me. Oh shit! I just nothing existed to me, and so. I'm like, I ate shit. I stopped the video, and I have this uh, this uh, Jill Carlson. She actually runs the Four Corners fo- comedy stuff, I guess. Or oh, the Four Corners and, Festival uh, or something? Yeah, yeah, and the Comic Uprising. Okay. She like, hey, that was a good set. It was your first time? I was like, yeah. Hey, man, that, that was pretty good. I'm like, okay. That Brian guy is like, man, that's really your first time? I'm like, yeah, I've never done this before. Like, you need to keep doing it. I'm like, what the fuck did they watch? Nice. You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? Just because I got up there? Like, that's... Before like anybody do it, <laughs> but before this though, have you ever had like any kind of like stage present things or done well, anything besides the, like rapping? Right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I used to do some freestyle ba- battles and, and, and stuff but like that. That's what I love about freestyle battling too, is because that is kind of like comedy because you're trying to diss on the guy that you're f- battling with, right? Trying to play off what he just told yeah, you. And, yeah, and and if you make it funny or like dramatic, you get the pop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I and I won't say I was that great at that. I yeah. was good at freestyling songs. Yeah. Um, but. The freestyle battling is just kind of how I started getting to know people in the scene. Okay. Um, so yeah, which in a sense, right? So like, uh, yeah, we did shows. Uh, we did uh, the biggest show we ever did is we opened up for D4L, who was that uh, Laffy Taffy song, which you probably don't even remember because so fucking. Shake that Laffy Taffy. Yeah. Let's shake that Laffy Taffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shake that Laffy Taffy. Yeah, we opened up for it, and when I was like, what's it, his name again? Uh, it's no, the group was D4L. D4L. Look up D4L yeah. right away. And uh, and so I just want to see what this guy looks like. <laughs> oh yeah, I know it's a bunch of it's a bunch of dudes from like Atlanta or some shit. Oh okay. Yeah. So um, so I'm like, and and back then I was like an uh, old school hip hop head in the sense where like I don't even like that garbage. I don't why. Yeah. Fuck it, let's just open up because we're do you know we got we had uh, through the radio and stuff we were able to do it, 
And um, it turned out most of those guys were pretty badass MCs. Just that one song was garbage, you know. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Shake yeah, that yeah. laugh it, tap yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Shake yeah. Shake that laugh it. Yeah, but it, it that pro- that song probably made them more than a lot of their other stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. It was the only song anybody knows. Yeah. Name another D4L song. <laughs> <laughs> what was the intro? Like, uh, who knows, there you, know? you go. Anyway, so um, and so it was you know it was a lot of people, not nervous at all, in front of this like forty people at this bar one night doing comedy. I was shaking like I got pulled over for DWI. Bro. Oh like, I was shit! Like, you know what I mean? Like you know you had a couple, you get pulled over, you're and you're like, like, I gotta do the test. Oh fuck! I hope you can smell it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> But um, but I was shaking bad. So anyway, so yeah, people start buying drinks and shit, and I'm just like baffled on why. So I get back to my room and I watch the video, and I'm like, hey, it wasn't, it was alright. And I can hear people laugh. I was like, fuck, people laughed. I didn't even hear it, you know. So that's kind of how it started. I sent it to some friends. I I couldn't share the video, so I had to load it up to YouTube to send it to the few friends of mine that uh, kept telling me, okay. you got to do comedy. They kept saying and saying. And Is saying. that still up? No, I took it down. Uh, I was about to say, let's go see <laughs> yeah. some Cardo Mad comedy. Yeah, no, that was garbage. <laughs> that was garbage. I mean, it was. It got laughs, but it was garbage. And, and again, it's you developing what this is. Right, right. So so I, I went up that one time. And then uh, I didn't go do it for like six, seven months. And then I just happened to be in Durango again, so I went up again. I think I went up in total six or seven times in three years. Just before this, before before I started really going down here. Okay. Yeah. I was like six or seven times over three years. So it's like when people ask me, well, how long have you been doing comedy? Well, technically, technically. And and I hate the fucking explaining it. Yeah. Technically three years ago, I started doing it seven or eight times. It don't fucking count. I wasn't doing it. That's where we're at right now too. Because technically I started four years ago, but how can I count COVID? Right. Like that was a whole year of not doing anything. Right. Like I just like the podcast and stuff. Well, yeah, I started for COVID also. Oh, okay. So that was like, you know, everything started getting closed down. But in Durango, in Colorado, things opened up a little sooner. Okay. So I was able to get back to doing it again a little sooner. But again, here and there. So, and, and I, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to do something, you, you can't call yourself a comedian or a photographer, a artist, if you like draw a picture a year. That don't go all in. Right. And like, you know what I mean? I mean, and don't get me wrong. I go in as much as I can being, you know, having a full-time job. I literally do have five fucking kids. It's yeah. not even a joke. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, a shitload of kids. <laughs> um, you know, and everything else I got going, it just any spare time I have, I'm, like, really dedicating to comedy right now. Um, unless it's something I already have pre-existing going on with my photography. Yeah, okay. Right? Otherwise, I I mean, it just, there's nothing like it, man. Because uh, I, I can see, like, you already have this establishment in comedy or in uh, photography where you're just, like, if a comedy show hit hit me up, but I had a bigger thing with the photography, I'm pretty sure you'd pick the photography, right? I don't know. Honestly, I'd probably pick the comedy right now. Oh, really? Yeah. That's sick. I'm, I, you know, one thing about me, man, and it, I fucking hate it about myself, is once I get an idea or something in my head that I want to start pursuing or doing, I can just not focus Dude, on it. Dude, tell me about it, man. I know how to do magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slide of hand magic. <laughs> yeah. And it just got into my head where, like, I can do this. Spent the last two years fucking perfecting it, getting so good, and now I have a routine, and now I actually have a thing that I can actually present to people oh, to blow them away. <laughs> but I get what you're saying is because you get into it and you're just like, I'm going full force. Yeah. I'm not going to just be like, oh, I do it a little bit, or yeah. oh, I do this a little bit. So that that's on that end. Right. And, and when I decide to do something, it's I'm doing comedy in the hopes to someday be on a big fucking stage somewhere doing nothing but comedy. But see, that's the thing, though. There's some yeah. great comics that have – like that are great and the biggest stage they've done is something like the comedy store right in whatever. LA yeah 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 what's up Dulce you got okay, a comment right? yeah so we have a comment okay and he asked if either of you have a scary scary personal story you would tell a scary personal story yeah and then he said just figured a comedian might have that kind of story but I don't know lol sorry it's so well, random you know I've been shot at like five times but I'm not like Zach man I moved around and shit yeah, I got yeah, robbed yeah, yeah. they they had me at gunpoint and they yeah. fucking tied me up and yeah. they stole all my guitars oh yeah like oh, I got no. there's yeah there's that's not funny that's scary yeah no <laughs> hey I, you don't give a fuck how big or strong you are someone starts bucking bullets at your ass yeah sure. what are you gonna do yeah no I'm sorry yeah. Yeah, that's scary as fuck and I've unfortunately been around a Quite a few situations where guns were fired off. I, you know, I was a complete asshole when I was young, man. Into a bunch of shit. Interesting. Yeah, most you have such a big heart. I feel well, like you're the fucking lovable teddy bear oh, man, in the scene what, already. I'm just, you know, it's it's funny as a lot of people, you know, people who've known me for a long time that knows my past and will look at me today and be like, 
I mean, how the fuck this even happened. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, thankfully, I kind of pulled my head on my ass early because I had my first daughter when I was 16. Oh, damn. So I like, it was like, okay, go to jail. And her, her mom ended up being an addict. So it was like, go to jail and then no one can take care of this kid. So you already Just, had this responsibility that right. you knew. Yeah, it's like, okay, I can either keep doing the dumb shit I'm doing and go to jail and then what's going to happen to this kid? Or I could stop doing that shit, focus on just working and supporting her, and, and that's it. And so I did that. You know what I mean? And I did it at the right time because literally months after that, uh, friends got raided, a couple friends got killed, you know, people in jail for fucking murder, just you name it, shit just started piling on itself. And, and you uh, you just like, I pulled out right on time. And, and it, of course, I'm the one who pulled out a few months before, but yeah. it's like, nah, yeah, you got me no papers, man. You can go look at I ain't never done no shit like that. But see, that, that's the thing, too, is that, like, I love how people are like, oh, a kid changes your life. Yeah. And you're a great example Abs- right there. Absolutely. And, you know, I had a, you know, I, I didn't have a, a broken home in the sense where the parents weren't there, right? But we had a family in the sense we weren't really a family. Yeah. We were just like five people lived in the same fucking house. Yeah, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't have really a family background growing up at all. I knew people I lived with. Yeah, you probably – did you guys You di- have dinner at the dinner table and oh, shit like that? Oh, very rarely. Yeah, same here. Rarely, like, yeah. you know, everyone got their food, went to a different room, go yeah. watch TV and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that in itself builds character too because yeah. you, you already know like – Especially if you have a kid, you're just like, do I want to do that? No. See? Uh, yeah. So I was like, so I told myself I was always going to be the exact opposite of how my family was. Like, I'm going to do as much as I can for my kids and all that. And thing, I mean, heck, my, my 24-year-old daughter just graduated their master's in, um, um, oh, Jesus Christ. Something cool. <laughs> Something excellent. <laughs> uh, um, she's a social worker. Oh, okay. Right? Helping people. That's cool. She had a rough life, you know what I mean? Dealing with her mom's stuff. I got custody to her when she was five. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So she actually hadn't seen her mom for like 14, no, 13 years until she graduated high school. So her mom gra- showed up to her graduation. Dang. And how was that? That was a moment, right? Yeah. It was. It was weird. You know, she came up to me and she's like, I'm glad you were around because I don't know what would happen to her. Nice. And she was, she was acknowledged. I'm it. glad that somebody can actually be a bigger person. Right. Right, yeah, and it's not, and so it's, well, here's the funny, so again, I have a pretty interesting life in the sense that it happened to me twice. Damn. Then my, my next daughter, who just graduated from high school. Pimpin'. I, uh, her mom, you know, she just, it didn't work out. She ended up moving to Arizona when my daughter was two. So I've actually had custody of her since she was two. Okay. And she just saw her mom for the first time again um, for her graduation. So I guess they, like, after they haven't been in their life for, like, ever, they just kind of, like, come at the end just to show them all, you know. Yeah. Send them off into the world. They're just like <laughs> they were like we weren't there to raise you, but we came, we made you. <laughs> yeah, we created I, you. I'm your mom, though. Yeah. You know, on paper, and then yeah. So it's it, again. I've it, I've kind of dealt with a lot of different shit in my life, man. It's crazy. So Do but, you, yeah. d- the doing that though, I mean, does that feel like it's gonna like is it shaping what you feel comedy like shaping what your comedy is like? Yeah, oh yeah. I life got, situations, yeah. fucking being in that having to deal with the gunshots and stuff like that. Yeah, and I haven't even gotten into any of that shit yet. It's crazy. I really, I have so much that I could just, it's, you know, like I was just at the, let's see the open mic on, um, the, what did you go to uh, red door at red door? I was just at red door the other day and I did some just fucked up story. Like yeah, terribly fucked up story, but some story about mom and dad. And I just like tell this story just to hear it out to see where it's, is there any funny? I think it's funny. I just got to find it. Yeah. You know, I've done that a couple times so far. Um, but that's it. Like, but I mean, it's you know, I'm working on these bits I've had for a long time now, trying to make them nice and tight, so I have a nice tight ten minutes. Yeah. To work with, and then work with new shit, so I can start. Because I mean, my goal is to do shows, and that's what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm not. Gonna, I know I can't. You know what I mean? And not, not to sound arrogant in that sense, but. Um, you I see know. other people go on stage, and you're just like, this guy's. As, you know, this I'm guy's not, doing I'm it. I can that. do that. I mean, I'm not saying that. Well, you know what I'm saying. Because I see, I see you it all the time. Yeah, I see it too. Where I'm just like, I go on stage and I'm just like, I can be- get better. I can do better. Or like, I just like, fuck, I bombed so bad. And then yeah. you see the next two comics and you're just like, oh, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. Well, and I know I've grown a lot. Like even like Caleb, literally, I had a real breakout set in my opinion, uh, in April. I think I want to say it was. Oh wait, no. Do we have an open mic at Revel in April? I don't remember. We there March. technically is one every month. But there was one where they got skipped because it was something booked. Okay. And I can't remember what month it was, but I'd gone up and I had I just changed my 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 main bit. I just changed it up. I'd been uh, working with Dawn, a uh, Dawn Elizabeth. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, she, we had just kind of started talking. She found one of my videos, 
uh, on my page or something. And, and so we just kind of started talking. And she was like, hey, instead of you being all super bro about the way you end that bit, you know, like, oh, I wasn't into it or that's why I did this or I'm never talking to her, you know, whatever. Why not, like, embrace it and see what happens? So I literally that week did it, like, twice, changing it up, and it had a good reaction both times. So I did it there that night, and the whole room laughed. That's sick. And after that, literally, like, Caleb came up to me. He's like, man, I just cannot – like, you've grown so much from the first time I saw you till now. Yeah. And you're just getting better. And – which I think Caleb's funny as hell, you know what I mean? He's a beast. And um, That's my other head. people, same thing, you know? So it was really, like, my – I got invited to the garage – chat yeah i kept hearing about this chat that the comics were on i was like well obviously i'm not a comedian yet because i'm not on it so but honestly after that happened in my opinion because i feel you have to earn yeah. everything right i was like okay i'm a comedian i'm not just a guy doing comedy anymore yeah i'm a comedian in new mexico who's trying to do something exactly you know what i mean and so. that's cool too that like because you went to the garage right you've been there a oh, few yeah. times I've, I, you know i only got once man it's kind of falling apart i guess yeah so because because the garage was technically created during covid right and it was popping because there was nowhere else to go so mm-hmm. you were just like all right well let's go to the garage invite a friend no yeah. it looks like six friends are coming right and right. it was you you seen the chairs like yeah, yeah. that thing was packed yeah okay. but then after like shit started to open up and comedy clubs started to like the open mic started to get mm-hmm. going again. Then everyone was like, "Well, I just did a set and it went pretty well. I don't feel like I want to go to the garage because it's man, we gotta support the garage, man." I wasn't even there during that party. I've heard this story. Yeah, dude, it was. It's like so popping. that means we William like put this together to try to give people somewhere to go. Yeah, right. Support it. You know what I mean? Like let's go. go like I'm like mind you. I mean I have it hard. I got my kids and shit, so yeah. I can go when I can go. But I, if he had one when I can be there, I'll be there just for the fact that of what I heard. I mean, he did that. He started doing that garage deal so people had somewhere to go when they couldn't go anywhere. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, like, support it still. Is and, it, and it established a lot of people, too. Right. I feel like uh, that's when I saw Tyler host okay. every fucking every Tuesday and Saturday. Uh-huh. He was hosting the garage. Oh, okay. He was the host. And he was just building and building. And now... He hosts so much shows around town that it yeah. that it. You don't see him do comedy that often. You he's see, hosting. he's doing a good a lot of hosting jobs. <laughs> yeah. But see, that's a good thing about him too. Is like he took that aspect of just like I know what's gonna help me in the yeah. comedy scene, and now he'll get booked on a show and he gets to do the hosting job. And yeah. you've seen you've seen how it works. Like you get you're the host, but you still get five oh, yeah. to ten minutes in yeah. the front. Yeah, or some people get 35. It just depends who they are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, like, in between, you're just like, God damn, that guy did horrible, right? Do we all agree? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and then yeah. he tells a joke, and yeah. then he can bring up the next comment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I seen him. Uh, he did that voodoo because he does a voodoo show. So I was there, and uh, AJ kind of had a – AJ Matthews, right? Yeah. yeah. Ken had a rough night, man. This table just was – they were just – you know, he was doing his thing, man. And, yeah. and this table just didn't take it the way they should. And he had a fucking comedy show. You know, they started kind of going back and forth with him. And he had to kind of like come in and kind of wrangle it back in and so uh, forth. And he did. I mean, he did good. I don't know how most people would handle it. Yeah. So I don't know how AJ didn't handle just punching the dude in the fucking face. Did man. it get that bad? I would have. Because <laughs> I did. I've done the, the voodoo show too, but it wasn't yeah. like I've seen Tyler do some of the voodoo shows. I'm okay. Thank you. Though. Um, I um I did some of the voodoo. I did a, one of the voodoo shows with him. But see, this is the thing though. Like Tyler really believes in a lot of other things that I do. He's like, oh, yeah. you do really good at guitar comedy. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck does that mean? So you know, you go on stage. No, I know, I know. But he's like, no, don't not you by yourself with a mic. Please yeah, bring a put guitar. Else there. And then we, d- <laughs> I did it. And then and then it wasn't as hot as a, like he seen me because he, Tyler has this like impression where he's just like, oh okay, I think you're funny. I like what you do. Uh-huh. But this one was like, what happened, dude? And I'm just like, I mean. It's it's the crowd interaction. It's who's yeah. there. It's what yeah. they're there for. Most of those people that go to the voodoo one are there because it's traffic. So they're just like, oh, where's it? What is there to do right now? Yeah, so they have to deal with traffic. And yeah. then they go, they go <laughs> to fucking, they go to voodoo pizza, and then yeah. all of a sudden they get bombarded by a comedy show. And yeah. you hear that all the time at open mics, oh, yeah. where like Royals all like, or anybody, they're just like, oh, I don't know if you knew this, but there's an open mic about to start, and yeah. then that already builds anticipation for like. Holy shit! Hopefully these guys are funny, or right. people are just like, "Yeah, I'm not uh, gonna stay for this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, and it's it's man, it's with you know, this is a hard deal to do. This really is like because half the time, you're starting out and you're at this open mic, nobody expected you to be at. These people weren't expecting to have to hear any of us go up there say any of the shit we say, and or some of the stuff we shouldn't say. You know what I mean? And it's just like it, it it's a hard deal, you know, because you're in there trying to make people laugh that did not go to do that at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? And but. I don't know. It takes, I don't know what's in us to make us keep doing it though. Like, I mean, I'll eat shit and I'm just like, fuck, 
why am I doing this? You shit? remember the laughs. Oh, you know that's what how I, mean? I feel. You remember I'm like, the I laughs. I can get back. I can do better next time. Yeah. And I man, I had I a I I went to Red Door. So I get to Red Door and there's a good crowd there. And I'm like, cool. I'm gonna do my my old stuff that I just added a couple tags to. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Awesome. They're here. This that. I'm like fifth person on. Fourth person goes up. Crowd walks out. And I always say, if it's not a crowd, I'm going to do new stuff. Yeah. You know? So uh, they all walk out. I'm stopping. I'm like, hey, you should hang out. They're like, yeah, we got to go. And uh, so then I go up there, and I'm like, literally the next person on. And I'm like, okay, what should I do? Old stuff or new stuff? Old stuff or new stuff? Fuck, I don't know. What should I do? What should I do? Oh, Cardo Matt. All right. I go up. I'm like, nothing comes out. No fucking clue what I'm going to say. I just sit there like, nothing. And no like, word, no nothing. No, I can't, I'm like, uh, like nothing's coming out, and I. It's hard to find me not fucking talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then I'm trying to remember bit anything. I start doing one fucking somewhere in the uh, three quarters of the way through it. Just start have like, why the fuck am I starting there? And then it took me like a good minute and a half or stuff to get my shit together and actually get a couple laughs. Okay. But it was just terrible. So I was like, I got to kill it next time I go, man. So I went the next time, and I did really good. Nice. I mean, I just – the cr- the crowd felt it. I was like – just was in the moment and everything. And I love when I've seen you. Like, I, the very first time I've ever saw you was at the Rebel set, and I was just like, this guy's all right. He's pretty good. And then last time I saw you, you were just fucking energetic. You had everything in the pocket. <laughs> I was like, this guy is hitting. <laughs> yeah. And it just – I mean, it just, you know, practice. It's you development, know? yeah. Yeah. I mean, mind you, and it's like none of my no, – I don't have not one bit that's even close to fucking done, which is hard because I really – it sucks doing the same shit over again. Yeah. Tell me about it. You want to do new shit. You know what I mean? But it's like, so now I've just made it. Like, if dry heat, I'm always going to just do new shit. Yeah, okay. So last couple of times, I actually dropped tonight uh, uh, a tag. It's a tag to me. Um, Sarah was like, hey, that'd be a good, that's a good premise. I'm like, actually, it's going to be a tag to Another. some other bit that I've had for a while. And she thought it was funny and stuff. And just like, but I'm just trying to do nothing but new shit there because it's just us. Yeah, that, it, to, for now. For now. Because especially since it's the opening and we're still developing at that comedy club. Right, exactly. And it's, it's awesome they did that. I think it's great. That's it's, uh, So do you know a little bit about the history of the comedy clubs here? Um, I mean, I know there used to be... This place called Laps. You ever yeah, heard of that place? Ago, yeah, yeah. I mm. remember. I never went to it. Really? I remember it was around. Nice. And then there was that one comedy club that opened downtown for a little while, but I heard that guy was like a creep or some shit. Uh, you know who it he's talking last. about? Kevin. Danger. Oh, is that who it is? I don't even know yeah. the dude. Is he around Danger. still? Yeah, he's still around. He's oh. actually came back into the scene. Oh, really? Yeah. He, I mean, he's a good comic. He has some funny stuff that he talks about and stuff, but I feel like he has like this ego of like himself, and oh. it's just like... Bring it down oh, a peg, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring it down. Well, but, you know, some people but then, are like that. <laughs> yeah, but, the, but then again, though, maybe that's what makes him funny is because, like, he's like, I know what I should present myself as because that's the look that I have and that's what it is. It's just his character. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of like, I like, I tell you what, man, I, I one person I really like is Chuck because he's a, the nicest fucking guy. Yeah, he's sick. He Chuck is, is fun. He's a nice dude. But, and before he goes up, you see him kind of pacing outside a little bit, building himself up, and then he goes up there and starts his kind of ranting and stuff, and I'm just like, Thumbs up emoji. Oh, dude, I love, <laughs> I this love dude, that man. one. I, he just, to me, he's got so much, kind of, in my opinion, like a Carlin S kind of vibe to him in that sense with the kind of ranting part of it. You yeah, know okay, I mean? yeah. It, just because of the ranting part of it, right? Because that was so much what, what, what Carlin did was ranting about this or that or whatever. And at that time, you already knew about these comedians, right? Oh, yeah. No, I've, yeah, I've, George Carlin, shit, you can't watch every goddamn special I could watch. That's I used to watch the US, USO shows and like anything I could watch. Just that's sick. Yeah. So you already had this idea of like comedy and stuff, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's what's crazy. Like when I first started too, I just had a little bit of a, a like a like a little footsteps, and like my my dad was like into like George Lopez, Paul yeah. Rodriguez, and these Hispanic comics, yeah. Latin kings of comedy, yeah, same. shit like that. And then I was just like, Jesus Christ, that seems so hard and difficult. But I played in a band, yeah. and like I like like I've been on stage, I've done where there's a good crowd, and it's been great. So I knew. If I can do that, I can go and do comedy. Mm. But then I realize, like, it's taken me, like, at least, like, 12 years to get good at guitar. And right. I'm fucking a virtuoso. Like, I play, like, Van Halen, like, no other tomorrow. 
but it took me that long to get there. Yeah, because you worked on your craft. And now I see it in comedy. I'm yeah. just like, I may be bombing now, dude, but you're ba- it's barely three years, buddy. Yeah. You're barely at three years. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should, we're not even supposed to know what we're doing until we're like at five. Yeah, and they say, like, you don't get really famous until 10. And I'm right. just like, well, that's, that's like a disheartening, like, oh, man, it's going to take that long. But then you realize, like, yeah, because it takes work. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, is. How many of us are built to do it, yeah. to do the work, right? Dude, I don't, you're going to see this. I'm pretty sure you have. But, like, people that come to the open mics and then they're like, yeah, I've always wanted to try it. They do two, yeah. never come back. Well, and I'm, I'm you know, I'll, and you'll, I'm not sure if you've seen me do this, but I'll do this in anything I do. Photography, comedy. If I see someone I think is like, I'll even, even though I'm new to it, I'll be like, dude, you should come back. You should go hit the mics. There's these, there's these kids that work at, like, a Hardy dealership that go up recently. I say kids because I'm older than all you motherfuckers. How old are you? I'm 41. Uh, that's, that's not bad. You look good. Yeah, you know. You look, like, told. You look like the cool chubby kid. I am. The, uh. yeah, I'm, the, I'm like the, <laughs> the Pillsbury Doughboy's aging wonderfully. Uh, <laughs> at the right. At, <laughs> at the, the right. right. <laughs> this right bread right. isn't going to spoil anytime no, soon. <laughs> no, no. Not until I have that heart attack crossing the freeway. Until uh, then. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but, um. But anyways, but yeah, yeah those Harley cool. kids coming up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I can't, and I wish I could remember their names right now, man. There was one guy; he's a big guy. So one time I went up and I was like, "It's good to know I'm not the biggest guy here for a change." Yeah, because he was there. But they're both funny. They, 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 they got something, but they don't. I've only seen them at just Rebel. Oh, and it's like go to these mics, man. Start doing it because it's like, I don't know. I just like anybody, right? You feel when you see a certain person, you can tell if they're gonna have something or not. Yeah, you know, there's some people that I watch and I'm just like, oh, I can't wait to see where they're gonna go. And then, like, shit, the first time I saw Fournier, dude, I became a fan instantly. Yeah, he's a – and that's a guy that's developed over years. Yeah, and you can years tell. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. Oh, dude, I, I the first time I met him, I was I was in – I happened to be in fucking Durango. Uh, I was <laughs> really? in Durango doing an open mic. And so I, I, I would always go up right away Yeah. because my nerves. You're just I like, can I get it? I get it over Christian R over here. Yeah, yeah, not uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Except you know, funnier. You know? It's just funny, you <laughs> I'm know. Just uh, I'm just kidding. This is what this podcast is about, <laughs> no, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> oh, you no, suck. I like, hey, Christian's a man. He's a cool dude. He's really fun. Like he's really nice, and he's yeah. a nice guy too. He is, super man. sweet. He's he uh, invited me to do a show with him. So I'll, uh, my first show, my first like scheduled show is going to be with him on September 24th at Lizard Hill. Nice. So I'm like ex- pumped about it, man. Jake, Jake Otero, man. He's a good kid. And I kid because you guys are again, you guys are kids yeah, too. He's but a, he's, he's like, you know, he talked he me up to like Christian. <laughs> he does yeah. like, like a very well, I don't know, kind of like a kid, kind of like a weird adult thing. kid I that smokes know. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was he he when he always talks about his uh about being a gnome or whatever. So he should like wear that hat someday. Yeah, just, right. <laughs> just like, just one time. Paint his beard white. You know, <laughs> just, once, just one time, Jake. No, just kidding. Or he has no, to get like rid of his kid. mustache and just have the beard. Oh yeah, like one of those fucking garden gnomes. <laughs> Hey, Winklebottom, <laughs> is that you? Yeah, <laughs> he's he's a good kid though. But anyways, yeah, Christian's a good, good good dude too, bro. That's cool though. That you're gonna be on that show. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna be on that show, but I still have to get a hold of him, see what's gonna happen. Yeah, because yeah. that's always the thing about promoting too. Is like they have this like ambition to pr- put you on a show, but then they're like they have so many people to pick from. Yeah, yeah. And they're just like, this is how I feel. Is that like I don't know if they want to make like 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 an enemy you know because yeah. they're like why didn't you book me over this guy and it's just yeah. like who cares dude we're all trying to do the same thing right it should never be that way man it, anybody who earns it and deserves it should get it yeah that's what it is or know, just because you're more like socially involved with them right like i've, I've christian like he has a, his group of friends that talk to him all the time and he knows they're funny, so he's going to put them on over right. somebody where he just met one time at right. an open mic. Or hasn't really conversed with him. And yeah, so forth. yeah, exactly. So that's crazy. Yeah, that which makes sense. And I'm a pretty friendly guy. Like, I I mean, I do sales, man. I yeah. can talk to fucking anybody. That's the point. Yeah, you, know, you, you have, have to try. To. You have to. And I mean, so, like, I also used to change schools a lot, right? So there was this one time in, like, a three-week period, I went to, like, four different schools or three different schools. What? Yeah. And then, mind you, remember, I'm the half-white, half-Mexican kid growing up in El Paso. Right by the fucking border, in the fucking hood. Right. You know what I mean? I got fucked with all the time. Everyone's a cholo there. You know what I mean, I was the, me and my sister, my sister and, my, uh, and me are both ple- you know pale as hell. My brother dark as shit. Uh, was, no. Mail like, man, mailman was dark, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you like that guy? <laughs> he was more of a mocha. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it just you know, so I grew up, you know, always getting fucked with. You know what I mean? Then I moved here. And uh, same shit, you know. I moved to the hood here, and it's like I was the only fucking white kid around, really, me and one other one. Yeah. You know, so I always got fucked with, and so so I always had to like, well, I can either fight all the time, or I can make people laugh, you know, or just be funny. And so I just kind of learned how to make friends right away, and so I just kind of like developed 
watching people, learning people, and like, and how to like converse with people. And that shit. makes sense. Because yeah. I remember when I was growing up too, I was always like, "You can probably kick my ass, but me making fun of you is gonna last way longer." Yeah. Everyone's gonna be talking about it. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be referencing that time where you got made fun of. Yeah. And just because you kicked my ass doesn't mean they're not going to still call you gay or stupid yeah. or anything like that, dude. That's what I always loved about being able to have the comedy of, like, if you're good with your words, you can do anything. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, words are stronger than anything. You yeah. know, you could say something to somebody and fuck them up for years. No, that's so true. And that, yeah. it doesn't even have to be, like, in a sense where, like, they're just, like, oh, everyone's making fun. You could probably say something and they think about that every day. They're just, yeah. like, fucking cardo i can't believe he told me that yeah, and you're not even in the same state anymore <laughs> and you're just living in somebody's head rent free exactly <laughs> that's that's the best yeah no no man i, I tell you what though man. i love you know a lot of people in the, in the scene have really been really cool man you know there's been a couple of hiccups and i think that's already all passed for the most part um but it's you know everybody seems pretty cool but i heard it kind of wasn't like that before the pandemic i heard it was kind of yeah, that's what people said too. Like, yeah. uh, they, like they they call it a class system. Yeah. So like w this class that we're in now, like all of us that are doing comedy, yeah. those guys that were before us, they literally say it wasn't like this. We don't have this camaraderie. We don't have this people trying to book shows together. It was yeah. just like my show, five people. That's all you ever see. Yeah. But now we're just like you. You've been on my podcast. Other people come on my podcast. We have all of these other people talking, and it just it's it's it brings more to the comedy scene because we know like oh shit i was talking to cardo and i came up with a funny joke when i was yeah. talking with him yeah. if i were to never to talk to you then what would i ever have, have that thought process to come up right and i've had those situations where it's a conversation and they say something like hey have you ever thought of this or that or or you say something to them and that's i mean i don't know it, it's it's i mean that's how i learned how to do photography by taking advice or listening to other people yeah you know what i mean God, i mean i'm pretty good at it you know i mean not to again sound arrogant but i know i'm good at it you know? <clears throat> gets you know his post shared you know what I mean? gets I'm a bunch of saying. shares on his yeah, post yeah. takes yeah. a picture of one comedian and he shares it on every platform <laughs> yeah yeah that's what's know? crazy too it's like these are what these comedians want too yeah. they just want to be like put on a pedestal and they're just like he took a great picture of me. I got to give him credit for doing that. Yeah, Thank you for yeah, doing that. Yeah. But they don't really, you don't really think that way either. You're just like, I'm just capturing, yeah, I'm capturing yeah. the moment. I'm doing what I like to do. Yeah, I'm capturing something I love, right? I look at it right now the few times, and then mind you, I don't take my camera with me every time I go to anything because it would be, it's kind of a hard thing to manage all this camera gear and that shit. What did you say? Have we talked about Cruise? Do you want to talk about Cruise? Absolutely. Cruz? Oh, Jesus yeah, we'll Christ. get to that. We'll get to it. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, too, is, well, like, I'm, like, I don't want to miss any open mics. And then when I miss one open mic, shit goes down. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Well, and the, nothing really went down at the open mic. I was mic. there. Yeah, you I was at there. that open mic. Yeah. So I can tell you that Cardo wasn't being inappropriate in any fucking way. He was just doing his bit. He was just doing what he does. And it's like, I don't know. I am so not supportive of going on social media Oh. And, and painting a picture. Yeah, because I don't know if you saw that. Oh, no. So I, I literally saw it three minutes before it came down. Okay. Because I, I work a full-time job, you know, so I don't have time to just be on there all the time, you know. And I just happened to open up and I... Scroll, like, scroll. Are, Damn. Well, I looked. I was like, I don't even know why I stopped on it, honestly. I normally wouldn't. I just... Because it wasn't like something about a show. I normally would just went right by it. Yeah. And, uh, but I caught it for a second and I was like, what the fuck? And I started reading it and I was like the fuck is going on with this and then i saw some of the comments and shit i'm like what the fuck you know so i start screenshotting shit so i have it you still have it i have one of the two of the shots okay i didn't even get the post shot uh, just the comments i started the comments up and uh you know there was two people obviously the person who posted it which yeah. is cruise yeah and then uh you know and and then there was a comment that was made but um you know like i'm not i'm old school man like i'm from the hood like i you don't do that yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. You Confront me in the front yeah. Run. Come yeah. talk to me in person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm a, I'm not a dick. Yeah. I can be. You know, I could easily revert back to old me at any fucking time. <laughs> I mean. But you know who else just had that? Uh, a particular situation is Mark Norman, and oh, he okay. came out with a video who, that, and he said the same thing. Comics talk to each other. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. don't like go and post a YouTube video and don't get a hold of them. Yeah. Or they talk put face someone to face. On blast. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny, dude. That, that That's what makes me sad sometimes that there's this, like, wokeness or this social justice where they're just like, I'm just going to post about it and everyone will be on my side. And then you end up looking at it and they're like, no one's agreeing with you, dude. Yeah. You're making this worse. Well, then I don't know who took it down. And then actually I got more. I was more. I was like, 
I think um, Sarah had even seen it, and she was just like, "Yeah, she posted something about it." Yeah, she was it. like, "Hey, tell, come message me if you don't want to call him out, you know, whatever." Because I mean, she, I mean, I, my opinion when I first saw him, like, okay, everybody knows who this is. Right? See, that's yeah. the thing; nobody did. No. Uh, do you know Troy? Uh huh. Troy Wilson. Uh huh. Like everyone thought. Well, a lot of the comics that weren't there thought that that was the one. Oh, really? Yeah, because he's a vulgar comic. Like, he comes up with these things where it's, like, offensive to so many people. But, yeah, if you really think about it, it's not that offensive. It's fucking yeah. funny. Yeah. And that's what I thought. I was like, fucking Troy, you yeah. fucked up. And, but all of a sudden, uh, Caleb told me about it was you. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> straight up. Every, I would just wanted to jump on everything on that yeah. end. Like, so it was, I was like, I was upset, man. Because, like, again, I have five kids, man, four daughters. That would never. I mean, if you, if anybody who knows that joke, besides me saying rape fantasy, which I've even talked about taking it out, and had had female comics tell me don't, because I was like, I, me and Don talked about it. I yeah. was like, Don, I should, I really feel like I should take this out, like, because even me saying it again, I have four daughters. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's an easy thing for me to say every time I say it. Yeah, I hear you. But it doesn't get the same punch unless it's sad, that aggressive. Yeah. It really is what it is. I mean, and the fact is that joke. Is more about a woman's empowerment over yeah. a man a hundred percent, and how dumb we are, uh, right? That's really what it is. If any, if there's if there's a woman that's heard that joke and thought, oh man, he's disrespecting us. I, there's never yet one person who's ever said that. That's not how I took it. No, nobody. As has. a woman, I was just like, this is a funny story. <laughs> yeah, and it's just that tag, that line, that that word, and I get it. Trust me. I I mean, there's there's I trust me. I know, but it's just what gives it that punch. But, you know, with that situation, man, like, so again, so the, you know, one of the guys that caught that, that yeah, I, I ran into them at open mic, like literally the next week. So I went up to one and we went outside and talked like, man, you know what I mean? We talked it out. We're good. That's good. Like, I don't, there's no reason even that that's it. And then I tried to talk to Cruz about it and he wasn't as receptive. Now, mind you, I'm a lot bigger than Cruz. No. <laughs> By a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? In any other situation, if he was a bigger dude than me and said what he said to me that day, I would have fucking punched him in the face and that would have been it. There would have been no way around it. But I've realized that he's, a, he's fucking tiny. You know what I mean? Yeah. I and, can't you, just, and then you can't be that guy who no. just like, you know. I'm not, and, and I'm really not, you know, but in to a, you know, but you also just don't disrespect. I'm from an era where you don't disrespect people. Like I'm, that. Yeah, Behind you, their back. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah. It's you like sneaky. Yeah, I can touch you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That, that's it. I can touch you. Well, that, the point I made is that when Sarah Kennedy says sees that, uh -huh. who owns the comedy club here? Right. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't paint a picture of another comment, comic like that on a public space where the owner of the comedy club, I think, is actually the starter or the administration for that page. Yeah. You can't do that because then, what? You're never going to get booked on a show there. Well, and well, here's the other thing. that This is what I was the most concerned with is he put it out right before the auditions and Sarah mm -hmm. was one of the judges. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. And so and so was Mary Bird who made a comment. And mm -hmm. I understand why she doesn't like me much. I made a... I was at an open <laughs> mic. No, no. I, I, I was at an open mic. Okay. He looks like I a was crib keeper. A, <laughs> I was at an open mic. And I, you know, made a joke about her being old. <laughs> and it didn't go over well. Well, what? I her. mean... Honestly, okay, so I've actually... Hey, I, it was disrespectful. She's older than me. I shouldn't have done it. It just, I was... But then again, we're in the comedy world. That's what you think, right? Yeah. I thought we were all in a safe space. Like, this is the, I'm holding the safety ball. Or, yeah, right. You know I, got I, mean? the, the I got the trust. mitten. I got the yeah. mitten. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have the ball of trust. What's going on here? You know what I mean? That's what this is to us. Yep. That's how I feel when I go on stage sometimes. It's like, I hope I don't offend anybody, but I'm trying to be funny. What I think is a funny idea. Right. Well, yeah. And I, you know how many jokes I've changed because of that? <sighs> There's so many jokes that I haven't said the way I originally thought it because I don't want to offend people. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Because there is that fear. There is that fear. You know what I mean? I find a way around it to yeah. still get the joke across. But sometimes the first time I thought it, thank God I never said it that way. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. I, just being real, realistic. You know, I mean, I my mind works kind of in, you know, like all of ours. I mean, I'm sure you're kind of like where most of us are in a way where situation stuff make us think of these oddball, the off the wall things or things people know. And you write it down yeah. right away, you know, and, and then that's it, you know? So it's like, you know, just how we think. Right. So I don't know. It, it, it was, I was, I was the thing I was the most upset about was the fact that it happened right before the auditions. And like, what's going to, that's going to suck if both of if just because of that, they feel like, Oh, I right. don't know if I can have this guy at my comedy right. festival. So I, and so Don told me, she's like, you need to double down on that joke. 
because I was, you know, I wasn't really thinking about not doing it anymore. But of course, it crossed my mind a little bit. Yeah. And she's like, no. She's like, because there's nothing wrong with it. So I did it again in front of them. And then after at the, at the, at the audition. And then afterwards, right, when everything wrapped up, I just asked Sarah, hey, Sarah, can we just talk outside? You know, so we went outside and I just said, hey, you've heard the bit now. Tell me what you think. Like, I mean, if you think it's something that's awful, tell me. Yeah. And, you know, and she had a good point just to say it's a, we have the same mindset. We both don't like rape fantasy part of the joke. I don't like it. She don't like it. But it's what gives it the punch. Yeah. And I, again, I've, I've been talked into keeping it. And we were we were just talking with Caleb about clean comedy. Yeah. And like some of the jokes that he has, if he took out the F word or he took out something, it doesn't hit as good. Yeah. Because that word is what the punchline right. is. Right. Or it is what it's gives the, the misdirect. Ag- adjective? Adjective? I don't fucking, I don't know that stuff that well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could barely read when I graduated high school. New Mexico uh, <laughs> education, buddy. Yeah. I, don't worry. I'm the same way. I fucking, I think, I, I think I'm seeing a word and I just guess what it is and I'm just like. I'm, I'm, this is horrible. <laughs> on hell, you're not dyslexic, you're just dumb. <laughs> That's yeah. all that is. I do it all the time. I'll see a word, I'll see the first couple letters and guess it's something, and yeah. it's not even fucking close. Congratulations. <laughs> no, that says gratitude. <laughs> I, I sent a message to this customer of mine, uh, one of my bigger customers. I, I sent it to him and his boss, and I said, I was like, good morning, genital men. <laughs> genital men. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I send it off. This big old heartfelt message. Send it off. And I get back just, like, the rolling, laughing shit or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I go back and look, and I'm like, that's so funny, you know? Uh. <laughs> and then he calls me, he's like, dude, you know he put gentleman? I was like, oh, is that what it says? I said gentleman. Uh, I was just going with the gentleman. Yeah, yeah, I don't fucking know how to spell it. That's <laughs> hilarious. I spell words so wrong that, that the you know, when you click the... the Autocorrect. It's like, I don't know what the fuck you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no... Uh, sorry, there's no options. It's what like, do you want to add this <laughs> word to our collection? <laughs> yeah. Is there a definition for this <laughs> word? <laughs> it, it asks me, can you use it in a sentence, please? <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, Siri, I thought you are smarter than I am. <laughs> a new logged word. <laughs> That's hilarious. <coughs> but coming into the comedy and stuff, did you kind of like... When I first started comedy, I didn't know about these rules and stuff about like, you know, like the rule of three or like timing and stuff like that. I don't know nothing about yeah, that. Yeah, see, that's crazy is because like they have these things where they're like laughs per minute. You ever yeah. heard of that? Yeah, I've, I've heard the term. I yeah. don't know and, and what it is exactly. And, and people that follow that, they're good. They do a good job. They're trying to do what this is comedy is based around. Uh-huh. But then you have people that know they're just like, I know I'm funny and I know if my story is 45 seconds and the last minute they're all going to be connected with it right. because that's where the punchline is and i can't do something else in the in the middle of those 45 seconds because i have to explain the story right right and that that's the hardest thing is trying to keep everybody especially because you've seen my comedy a lot of it is kind of like story yeah and i'm when i was a rapper i was a storyteller rapper too like okay. i told stories and I, I, that's what i like the most like i like comics that tell stories and stuff too yeah so uh that's been the hardest thing is trying to figure out how to keep person someone engaged enough to get to that punchline. Yeah. And that's where, like, um, um, Steph just gave me some advice, you know, the other, he finally saw my set for the first time and he was like, yeah, you just got to cut some of that fat out of it, man. Like, get some funnier, you know, put some funny in there or squeeze it up tighter and he's like, outside of that, it's good. It's good stuff. You just got to, you know, and I know that. But, I mean, as far as the rules of comedy stuff, I'll be honest, I mean, I don't know a lot of them. Yeah. You know I mean? Back when I used to be a rapper... It was like, you know, 16 bar hook this and 8 bar hook and 16 bar that. I didn't pay attention to that shit. I just did what I did. Yeah. And if it was good, cool. You know what I mean? And, you know, and that was it. I didn't follow the rules. It's it's my art. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when I'm up there doing what I'm doing, it's just me telling my story in a sense, right? My joke, the story, whatever. Um, and I don't really put too much thought into that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm just kind of trying to find the funny, looking, trying to learn how to get the reaction from the crowd to see what they're liking what they're not liking trying to read the room there's a lot to it because i've seen you do more with your act outs too yeah like you're actually walking around the stage more and you're like engaging if there's a person over here you walk all the way to this side and there's that person you talk to and it's more more of the energy that's 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 given when i first saw you because when i first saw you i think you were just on stage one or two jokes and then you like maybe rubbed your belly because that that referenced the joke but now you're literally like on this stage and you're like the fattest person then you go to the other <laughs> side and you're just like i see that you're like yeah. that's what makes it so much funny yeah yeah and i and i mean that's uh, everybody's told me dude your stage presence is there yeah you know I, I, buck, I reached out to buck d and matter of fact you know and 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 uh he kind of knew about the whole cruise thing and i guess 
you know what I mean? And he was just, his thing thought like, why would you? Why did he say any of that shit? You know? Yeah. And um and uh, he uh he told me I, I I asked him, hey, please watch my video because I think you, I want you to shoot me straight, like beat me the fuck up. Kind yeah. Of thing. Like tell me how bad it is, you know. And he was like, your stage presence is good, man. You got it, you know this and that. So like to me, that was a like affirming that I'm not. You know, we're always looking for someone to say we're doing better. Yeah, right? we're doing good. That we, we don't stand in front of people and t- talk jokes because we're not looking for attention. And that's what I love, too, is, like, <laughs> I love when you find the, like, when you when you came onto the scene and you first saw me, you literally were like, that's funny. Like, yeah. that fucking, or, or that fucking. The uh, Samsung joke. That oh is hilarious. God. I love it. The and first that, time I heard it. And oh. that's so beautiful, too, because it's just like, oh, man, that's that came from a reassurance from somebody I don't know. Right. Like, I get I get it sometimes from, like, you know, some of the comics where they're just like, oh, on hell, why did that joke hit better than it did last week or something? But when it's a new person, yeah. you're just like, I know I'm doing this. Right. I know I'm doing the right thing. Because you got that person's attention that hasn't seen you before exactly right exactly and she tells me this all the time too she's like you do great you do great when it's a new crowd but when it's the same people or the same comics of course they're gonna like i've heard this before or like this is kind of funny and they don't give you the full interaction feedback when you get from a new crowd right because they've heard it a few times oh yeah Yeah. exactly and and i'm guilty of it too i mean don't get me wrong um like every time every time every time i've heard you do that joke i laugh yeah like it's the first time i bring it ah, i have to walk away and shit and laugh uh, Jake's got his uh, his new one about the uh, hangman. I don't know if you heard that yeah, one. Yeah, that one's funny. Oh my god, dude! Every time he says that one part of that joke, I'm just I'm not, I just don't want to tell people's jokes on yeah. here. Like, go see Jake Otero somewhere. Go see, you know what I mean? Like, it's go see Angel somewhere. Go see everybody. Go see us. But um, but yeah, he, he every time he tells it, dude, I laugh. I was at I went and watched him at that um, what's that place to do comedy in Old Town? I forget. Uh, uh shit, I don't remember. But there's a place in Old Town right there that they do comedy. Was it a Robert Eister show? Uh, it might have been. I don't I think know. Because he, he puts on a show in Old yeah, Town, I think. Yeah, I know Zach. I went and saw Zach there once, but it they, they didn't go on soon enough, so I had to leave. But the last time, I got to catch uh, Jake and uh, Karen was there. Um, shoot, I can't remember who else. There was somebody else. I, I can, I'm drawing a blank. But anyways, he told that joke, and a lot, a lot, not a lot of people really got it or didn't, you know. But I still laughed at it like it was the first time I heard it, man, because it was yeah. just that. I'm a fan of comedy overall. Like, I just love comedy, period. Yeah, I'm an easy laugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And everybody knows my laugh now. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a pretty distinct laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But it just, it just, I love comedy, period. Like, I, sometimes I'm laughing my ass off and nobody else did. But it's because, like, I get the premise. I get what that person's trying See, to do. Me too. I yeah. get where they're going. Even yeah. though they didn't write the best punchline i could see where the punchline yeah came. you could see the thought they had yeah, and i think it's like funny. what that what this premise came from you know yeah. you know what i mean i was like i tried to do this i got this one i it started i'm trying to make it a joke i, I mean i i was watching that boys in the boys in the hood movie the other day oh, okay and i did this the other day but i realized i'm fucking 41 years old and most people most don't of you guys know. don't even know who the fuck <laughs> yeah. boys in the hood was you know and I'm just like, why? So I did it the other day and actually got laughs, but I, I said, uh, you know, I never, and have you ever seen the movie? Probably not. Uh, I remember it. It's okay. the Ice Cube, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I say on there, I said, uh, I said, uh, I was like, how many of you sit there and watch that and just wonder how many fucking takes before the director's find like, okay, this kid can't catch a fucking football. Yeah. <laughs> right? He just can't catch it. Like, this is the closest way to hit his knee. Let's just keep that one, I guess. Uh, then we got this. Right? You know what I mean? So it's like, I have thoughts like that all the time, but sometimes generationally, because of who comes to these shows, it wouldn't do shit oh, because dude. nobody knows this movie. Oh, dude, you should see me with anime jokes of oh, like I Japanese bet. cartoons. I've heard a few of them. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't do nothing with it. <laughs> but w- when I, I booked a show at the anime convention, yeah, right? at, yeah. at Subaku Con, and those were like good jokes. And right. I was just like, this is what I reaffirm myself as. Yeah. Like, maybe I don't know the crowd, but when I find the crowd, those are the jokes I should tell at this end. Right. Switch it up when I go on this side, or you know, just finding the crowd. And that's what I got to really learn, man, is really how to read that crowd and. And, and, and so forth. I'm still learning. Sometimes yeah. I catch myself zoning out and not seeing it. Like sometimes I go up there and I'm so focused on just trying to get through my material and not fuck up that I forget. I'm not really look. Oh, sorry. I'm not really looking at some of the reactions I'm trying to get and so forth because I'm just so just trying to get the bit out in five and a half or five minutes, depending on what it is. I don't want to get shit. The music got turned on me last time I was at fucking. Oh, room. yeah. Right when I was saying bye, they shut my mic off and fucking. But I was like. I'm not good. I can't time. I like. I have an idea that I have five minutes or ten or whatever, yeah. but 
I don't fucking. And then like being new to the scene too, like you don't understand the light as well and stuff too. Like or people remember people, to look for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or like, cause okay, this is what happens too a lot is like uh, they'll do the light in different spots. Right. And you're just like, I'm looking for the light. I have to look for the light. Yeah. This is kind of ruining my joke because yeah. I have to make sure that I'm on time and shit. <laughs> I'm trying to engage. I try. You know, this watch has a timer on it, right? So last time I actually set the timer. Never looked at it again. Not even once. <laughs> Didn't do any good. <laughs> That's what I like about the the new comedy club. Right. You see the timer in the yes. back. They that have actually is very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was very helpful. I mean, it, just the fact that it's there, and you can actually watch it. You know where you're at on it. I think they should all have it. But I don't. I it, it's. I've cut it close a couple times. Yeah. But it just because I'm trying to get as much out of it as I can too. But I also don't want to be rude and disrespectful. Like I know my time isn't my time, and that's it. Yeah. I'm just learning how to get through that time and. Especially when you're up there trying to, like, start crowd working for the first time or doing shit that I'm doing now where I'm just trying to improv a little bit first before I go into a bit. And it's like, well, how much did that little bit take if I wait from my bit? And am I going to be able to get through my whole bit now? Yeah. Because I was trying to, like, get the crowd on my side before I started into this. Because the reality is, like, that bit I do, I, they need to be on my side before I start saying it. I can't be like, oh, hey, I just started dating, da da da, and this girl has this rape fantasy, like in the first minute. Because yeah. everybody's like, what the fuck? Yeah, they're already. I just... gotta get a laugh first. They have to like me first. Otherwise, I would, I should, I wouldn't listen to it the second I heard it. And I've seen people check out the second I say that word. Yeah. I've seen it a couple times. And, that, and that's, again, what made me really think, like, I should take it out. But again, everybody tells me just leave it in there. Yeah, and it's just finding the, the, the funny of it. And it's, yeah. that's the thing, though. It's, there's already some funny in it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But um, but yeah, it's it's I don't know, it's it's fun though, man. There's just nothing else like this shit, man. It's Com- fucking yeah. goddamn fucked. Yeah, comedy is dope. Like you know. just going into it and like again, we can still bomb, whatever. But what what brings me back is that I know that I made people laugh before, right? And right. I can do it again, right? And well, then sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, but I know that I can do it. You know what's there? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I've been thankfully fortunate enough that I've yet to do a set where nobody laughed at anything. Yeah. I've seen some of those sets. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, I, I would have shot myself for sure. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> same thing. And that's Caleb easy, said. bro. As soon as I get in the car, it can be done. And, you know, you know like, <laughs> and that's, what I, that's what I love about that, too, is like, like, I love when the comics do good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love that they're doing good, that they're trying their best. They get a good laugh. That's awesome. Yeah. But it's a little bit better when they bomb. Because you know that they tried something and it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, damn it, dude, why? <laughs> and that's what I love about this scene, too, is like, like a car wreck. <laughs> yeah, we're just, we're, it's like, oh, I can't look away. Right, right, right. And it like, makes it oh, so much what funnier. Did you just say, fuck, that's not going to go over well. I tell you what, I've been in. Bomb more, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make me laugh. I was this one time, I was doing a mic in Durango one time, man, and this guy just did not read the fucking crowd, bro. It was a bunch of college girls. And he was saying all this, like, you know, just, you know. Sochimist. Yeah, there you go. I'm trying dick to this, the word. dick that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Women belong in the kitchen. <laughs> and shit. To a bunch of college students. Oh, Jesus. It was the most quietest that room had ever been. <laughs> and see, that guy probably has this mentality where it's just like, fuck, maybe I just didn't hit. Like, right. no. Yeah. You no, didn't no, read the crowd, no, dude. No, that wasn't, it wasn't that, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> dude, one of my first times doing comedy was at Sidewinders, and I didn't realize it was a gay bar. <laughs> I got a funny story and I that. did a whole fucking set on <laughs> being assumed to be a lesbian. <laughs> and you could just see these lesbians in the room going, what I'm just saying? waiting to be offended. <laughs> they like couldn't they couldn't bring themselves to laugh because they were waiting to get offended. Yeah. And it's like, but I didn't <laughs> I didn't even read the bar. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know it was a gay bar until I pulled up. And their fucking parking space. Well, it doesn't uh, say gay bar on the outside. Thank either. you. <laughs> yeah, right. But their parking spaces have a rainbow fucking stopper. So mm. then I was like, oh, wow, they're really festive here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they're ready somebody, for Pride Week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every day. Somebody mentioned it at the bar and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> oh, fuck. There's like three and a half minutes about being fucking lesbian, but not really being lesbian. Well, I mean, I do a joke about getting fucked in the ass with a dildo. Oh, yeah, right. right? So the sword in the stone. A, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that one day. Yeah. Nobody knew what the fuck I was talking about. Oh, so I dumb. told someone, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, about sword of the dildo, like sword of the stone type shit. It was yeah. some other joke I was working on. And everyone was like, what is that from? I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? What is that from? Dude, come it's on. It's a fucking Disney cartoon. King <laughs> Arthur, <laughs> baby. But, Generational shit. Yeah, but that's how I, you know. But anyways, but yeah, no, I went, I went, uh, I went and did Sidewinders for the first time. And so I invited a friend, female friend, to go with me. 
because I'm not showing up at this place just me. Yeah, right? dude, tell me about it. You tell I mean? me about no, but it. Listen, listen. So I walk in, and it's a bunch of dudes like me. It's a bunch of big, fatter guys with beards and shit like that, yeah. like me. They're looking for small dudes. They're not looking for another. Bears don't look for other bears. You know, they're looking for an on hill to walk in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I do. Right. And so I walk in, and I, she's there with me. I'm thinking, like, I didn't have to Brook and bring nobody. They ain't trying to hit on me. You know what I mean? They're trying. They're the ones buying the drinks for the cute dude that walks in. All right. <laughs> you know. But I did so. I actually, I went pretty well too. They laughed, and I got some good, some good, good laughs that day. Um, which I've heard it's kind of hard in that room because yeah. of the fact that it's, it's so much going on. The bar's right. going on. Karaoke is going shaped, on. The way it's shaped. The way the what's that guy's name who runs it again? Royal. Royal. Yeah. You know, Royals. Well, when I was there, he was here, and then you have this table in this area, and then this area, and then it, the bar, and then it extends that way. Yeah. And there's, there was a lot of people over there. So I just kind of like walked over to the kind of the corner of the bar almost and tried to play both sides of the room from there. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? And that, that, that place does have a good stage too. And they used to do it in the stage room. Mm-hmm. But I think they're trying to get more people to buy alcohol and stuff. Right. So it's easier when they're doing karaoke there, when they do the jokes there, and you literally are just like, that was a good song. Let's grab a beer. Yeah. You're there to do And you still can enjoy the comedy right. compared to that other room where you're just like, that was funny. I got to go get something to drink. You get something. I don't want to miss something, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's kind of why I think Royal does it in that area now, too, right. more. And then, like, getting waitresses and waiters. I mean, everybody's shorthanded with that shit. So it's yeah. not like they have somebody that can go take drink orders. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right, right. That's true too. So, but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, but yeah, it was just funny because you just, that's the bro part of me where you're just like, I'm not going in there, you know? They're gonna think uh, I'm gay, you know? Dude, what I, mean? per- I, oh. I do all kinds of jokes about being gay, dude. <laughs> I, that's so funny when I tell people like, yeah, I do comedy, and they're like, what are you doing tonight? And it's like, oh, I'm going to a gay bar, and they're like, yeah. really? It's like, yeah. dude, I'm just gonna go do comedy. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not trying to get hit like, on or anything. Which I'm not sucking happens. dick at the bar. Right? <laughs> like I say it all the time, I'd probably be gay if I get past the dick part. Yeah, you know what I mean? I just can't get past that part. Like it'd be cool to just hang out with the dude all the time, work on cars. You know what I mean? The bro stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. But oh, I don't want to suck his dick. Uh, I just don't want to do it's it. Like, I like the emotional side of this relationship. Right, right. I'm sorry, but I'm not that kind of girl. You know what uh, I mean? Like, I don't put out. You know? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> there you go. There you go. But yeah. No but they, Right, right, right. I don't say you no know homo. That's that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're thinking of homo things if you say no homo. Yeah. yeah, that's like saying no offense before you say something. Exactly right. No homo, but... Yeah. I would probably not suck your dick, and you're yeah. just like, yeah, you probably I'll just, would, like, dude. <laughs> keep talking about sucking dick, but I'm not gonna do it. Exactly, that's, not, that's it. You know what I mean? Nothing against people. You know, I used to say, um, I still say it sometimes. Like, yeah, going up there, and I sucked a bag of dicks. Like, it's a bad thing. Yeah, there's people who made a career off of that. You know, right. you know I me, mean? Houston 500, shit like that in the porns. When <laughs> they, kind of like, they made a career. Like that girl made money and was famous off of that shit. And I'm over here like trashing it like it's a bad thing. Yeah. So I stopped doing it. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. Like, what do we say? We just say bomb. Yeah, they say yeah. bomber. We ate shit. Like those, ate are, shit. yeah, I those, those, are, shit. those yeah. are the most of it. But like, people say that too, though. Yeah, like, I just ate a bag of dicks, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just like, it's a, it's a reference to sucking. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. you know, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I think I heard, uh, I think maybe Louis C.K. did a joke about bag of dicks or something or whatever. But, okay, but I just remember, I just like thought said that one day. I was like, you know, why am I trashing it? Like, I shouldn't say that anymore because some people that's what they like to do. You know, it's not, and I like getting it. So uh, I why can't am I compl- talking shit about it. I you can't know? complain about this anymore. Why do people reference bad things to like, oh, that sucked, dick? Well, you know, I mean, that's fun for somebody. Sometimes for both. It just yeah. depends who they are. That's, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it's 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 a fixation, I I shouldn't. But then again, you know, that's why it's funny. Yeah. Exactly. It's because you're doing that misdirect where, like, I wouldn't say something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, well, like, like the, I think that's a lot about my about how my comedy is. It's kind of like the misdirect. Yeah. With that one bit, for example, that's the, you know, I keep, we keep going back to, but because it's the misdirect of what you're expecting it to be, nobody ever thinks it's going to go that way. Yeah. And it's funnier now because now that I've changed it, people are starting to get it before I get there. Oh. Uh. And I've seen it a couple times where someone's like, oh, oh, like, and they're just like excited, waiting for them to say what they know what's coming next. And I've changed a joke enough where I want people to kind of know what's coming up. You know, like when I say, I said, uh, I, I think halfway through the thing, I'm saying like, I stop and say, yeah, I just don't feel comfortable with this and this and that. And then she's like, no, don't worry. I'll make you comfortable for you. Like little things, because it's like, I'm, ha- I'm helping them get there, you know, as I'm telling the story. Right. Cause like, well, does he mean? Oh, you know okay, I mean? And yeah. Either they get it then and realize what's about to happen, 
Or then when it happens, like, oh, yeah, that's, oh, shit, how do you not see that? You're yeah. the only, you know, I want to be the only idiot that didn't know what was going to happen. And that's good. <laughs> that, that's what makes it a little bit more suspenseful. And right. if you don't see it coming and it just hits you hard, you're yeah. just like, ah, I can't yeah. believe I didn't see that. Right, right. And, but when people, like I said, I've seen a few, um, I did it at uh, Lizard Tail about two weeks ago. And this girl knew. She, I was going through it, whatever, and I was probably about 15, 20 seconds away from that part. And she goes, oh, oh. Oh, like that. And I was like, what the fuck is she doing? You know, and I was like, and then I say it. And she, ah, yeah, yeah. And like, oh, it's because she figured out what was going on. You okay, know? yeah. So I thought it was kind of neat because like she felt like she had this inside secret nobody knew yet. You know what I mean? Because she figured out before I got there. Uh, I feel like, I don't know. I'm just overthinking it. <laughs> at, the, at that point, you're just like, I'm just trying to do the comedy. <laughs> yeah. Point. Well, I, I mean, I'm trying to analyze things. I mean, when I used to do freestyle, you know, you're thinking about what you're going to say two minutes down the road. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times when I'm doing comedy, I'm doing the same thing, like changing a word before I say it or changing this or that before I get there. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's never the same. I've never done any of those bits the same. Yeah, it makes sense. Especially like Steph always says it too. He's just like, oh, if you've done the bit before, change it up a little bit. Yeah. You don't know what's going to come out of it. Mm-hmm. What's up, Dulcie? So um, <clears throat> actually, we have a comment from Caleb. Oh, who we had on earlier. Caleb yeah. is in the what's house. What's up, Caleb? Uh, Mulky comedy. <laughs> yeah. He said, sorry if the chair's wet, Cardo. Angel's thighs got me all worked up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because we were here during midday. Yeah, dude, I saw it. 104 degrees, dude. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Hot as fuck, and he's over here fucking, I just wet all <laughs> over your chair. <laughs> yeah, I saw him. He was in his hoochie daddy shorts. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I hope nobody could see my knees. <laughs> it was like this. He was with his leg crossed. Just, I was like, what is he doing, man? No, just kidding. No, I... I I was actually when I saw that I was like, oh, he's doing two podcasts today. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> and because we we scheduled yours a little bit later, so I was yeah. just like, we're doing nothing right now. Let's yeah. see if we can get somebody else on. Yeah, and Caleb was ready to go, so I was just like, yeah, well, he has a couple shows coming up. We yeah. could promote those. We're both doing. I'm going against him at the roast battle. Oh, are you? Okay, in, uh, uh, two weeks, right? Yeah, the twentieth. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. July twentieth. I think I can go to that one. Yeah, it's dude. Have you ever been to any of the roast battles? No, not yet. Dude, that. I want to. Oh, I love roast battles. Dude, I, I used to do fucking battle rounds. Exactly. That and shit. that's that's the fun part, too, yeah. is because, like, the the, cry, the crowd is so hyped because they know we're there to talk shit about each other. Right, right. And that's just, oh, man, I, that it's it's amazing. Yeah, I'll go to this one for sure. It was dope. I think I should be able to because I, I actually leave town Thursday night to Colorado to go shoot a car show. Okay. Yeah, so. And th- there might maybe be some really big news coming. Oh, right, I'm not talking about oh, it. Oh shit! You're one of those guys. I, man, I I know a lot of people, you know, and like promoters and nice. different shit because of the car show stuff. That's sick. So I don't know. I got kind of got told that they're trying to get me on some comedy show that's gonna happen in Colorado that same weekend I'm there. Oh. With like someone that's been around for a while, which I don't deserve. But still, <laughs> but, that's that's what everybody says. But <coughs> you're doing it. Right. Well, and we, I don't know. You know, it might happen, may not. But yeah. I don't believe a lot of shit till it happens. Yeah. I've, I've been told so much shit. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. Blah, blah, blah. This is going down. Yeah, yeah. Then it doesn't happen. But I, you know, I got a call from a guy a couple of days ago, and I thought it was about that. And then the guy who was supposed to make the decision was calling him, and he's like, "I'll call you back." So I don't even still don't even know what's going on yet. So if it comes up, I'll announce it. But nice. until then, I'm not gonna. You still just keep it hush hush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'd be a, it'd be a big deal. I don't think I deserve it, but it'd be a big deal. That'd be sick, especially like you. I see you, man. You're working. That's yeah. that's the best part is when you see people out there trying to work yeah. and they get put on shows. You're just like, hell yeah, good. That guy yeah. deserves it. Well, and that's and that's how I f- I feel like that's how it should be though, right? Like you should deserve the breaks you get. Yeah. But in in the same hand, like with this particular situation, if it happens, I'm not gonna say no. Uh. You know what I mean? I think I can do it. And that, that's what's crazy, too, to think about is, like, when I first started comedy, I was like, I got to take every show, no right. matter what. Take every show. But now that I've been doing it for so long, I'm just like, I don't know if that's the show for me or if right. I should be on this show. Like, you know, kind of kind of makes you reevaluate some stuff. But then you hear comedians where they're just like, no matter what, you got to do the show. You got to do everything. Right, right. I mean, the more time you ha- you're up there, the you know, the more reps you have, right? Exactly. I mean, I feel like. That's the only way you can get to your best at this is by doing it at every opportunity you get. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and that's what I'm trying to do. I wish I had more time. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, I have a I, goal in mind, man. I would That'd be awesome to just do this as a full-time deal. Someday. Dude, that's the dream, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure you're. there's other things. Like, imagine if the photography hit a lot more. Well, and honestly, if I just totally didn't do comedy and only focused on that, it's at the point now where it's starting to do that. Oh, see, that's but dope. it's not the same. Do you feel different? I do. I dude, I feel the same way too cuz I like 
playing in the band and stuff. Yeah. I've played some pretty packed shows, yeah. but it's nothing like a comedy show with it's even not. just even just with fifteen people right. and you kill. You're just like, well, what was I doing well, for the last twenty years? Yeah. Well, and this is how I look at it, right? Like, you know, I may have just made somebody that had the worst fucking day ever. Worst day ever. They 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 fuck it. I'm gonna go get watch comedy. I'm gonna drink a beer. And I just made them laugh. Or even get all about it. Or even those people that are there for not even comedy. Right. But you still get their attention. Right. And they're they're like this guy. Like this thing they didn't expect. Exactly. Coming up to you later saying, That was really funny. Uh huh. You know, I mean it's 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 about that. It's about, you know, making people smile and laugh that you know, maybe they needed it that day. Right? Maybe they just again, you don't know what they're going through. I drive around when I drive I'm I'm weird. I, I'll look at people and I'm like, I wonder what they're going through. Where are they going? Where's this person even heading to? Like, I'm always thinking about shit like that. That's it. That makes they could, you could be right next to the person who just got the worst fucking news ever. Right. You don't know. Yeah, it's so true. You that's, know. Well, that's why when I, uh, I always freak people out at my work because I work at a retirement home. Oh, okay. So you see, like, you know, family members and stuff. I know the old Sometimes. person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude. Dude. I know. Dude. I know. I know. I yeah. feel so sad, Every too. Every once in a while, yeah, you see family members. I feel so sad because I'm just like, oh, no, Mary, let me go give you your grilled cheese. Yeah. Remember to put me in your will. Yeah, yeah. I'm the one taking care of you. <laughs> yeah, remember the. Stuck you here. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're in another state. They yeah, don't care. No. But um, I've always been, like, now, especially, I always, if we make eye contact, I literally have to say hello. Yeah. It feels weird not to because you've acknowledged that you're looking at me and yeah. I'm just like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. And if you get weirded out, you don't have to say anything. Just right. walk on by. But yeah. if but sometimes it's like the person just like looks at you and you're just like, hey, how's it going? They're like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Like they did not expect that. Right. They walk past hundreds of people all the time and they don't expect that one person to just be like eye contact. Hello. Yeah. And they, you're not trying to engage their life you're not trying to find out what's the nitty gritty of them you're just literally like you acknowledge me i acknowledge you hello how's it going yeah. or hey what's up or something so simple i just freak out people all the time now literally walk down she sees it all the time too like random old lady <laughs> at walmart she looks right at me i'm just like oh hello yeah. and then the old lady just walks right past me and i'm just like i don't know what to say well, you, you we looked at each other <laughs> you can't do that off a of fucking zuni and san mateo bro <laughs> <laughs> people ain't trying to say what's up to you. <laughs> that's true because then they're just like what's up fool that's literally the most hood walmart i think in town like you know i mean we don't call it the war zone anymore i guess right what is it called now? international like, district whatever it's still a fucking war it's zone. totally the war yeah. Zone, dude. It's the same. dude when i grew up there i grew up i went to the the elementary school la mesa uh -huh. went there for a while and literally it was just all the time the circle there there's the caravan east at that time yes that bar yeah, there yeah, dude I, I lived right right behind that oh, bar yeah. dude shit. so i saw some fucking shit the pussycat fucking theater or whatever right where there, you can okay. still go buy some fucking pornos and shit yeah. like that i remember having to walk from the bus going down that way and i'm just like this is life. Yeah. This is life. I mean, this is what happens. And that, that I think that shapes more of a character in somebody right. than somebody that grows up in the suburbs and, like, never goes and sees any of that right. stuff. No, it, it makes us different people. It really does. I mean, you know, I, there's a lot to say for street smart. You know, you can be book smart. But there's a lot a lot to say about street smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, you, you're always evaluating things, thinking about what you're doing. I mean, you know, not leaving stuff in your car. You know, no, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just, you know, you think, okay, I'm not going to park here because this. I'm not, because, you know, I look at it as like, okay, if I was X amount of years old and I had seen that sitting there, what would I have done? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whatever. So, you know, that street smart, it, you know, it does a lot for people that you don't realize. You know, if you do something with it, you can be the person who grows up in those kind of situations that never changes your path. You just take that advantage of stuff like, right. oh, I've, this is my bringing up. This is what I've yeah, learned. This is all I know. Yeah. Well, you could do different. Every, yeah. Is it hard? Yeah, fuck yeah, it is. Very. You know what I mean? Doing something against the grain is always going to be hard or doing something that your whole family didn't do or whatever. But I, I firmly believe in the sense that you can make, you know, everything happens because of a decision you made. Right. I made a decision fucking three and a half years ago to go do comedy. Now here I am doing an open mic. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm doing a, a, a podcast, podcast for the first me. time. Yeah. And, and, and to think this is his first podcast. He's yeah. fucking getting his cherry pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Cute. Right here by this young guy. Yeah, right. This, is this statutory? I don't even know. I'm the twink, baby. <laughs> so anyways, but you know what I'm saying? It's like you don't have to be your, a product of your environment. You know, mind you, hey, I'm not saying it's not eat hard. For some people, it's probably going to be the hardest struggle ever to get past it. But you can make that decision to do it. Yeah. I could have been a shit fucking dad. I could have done a lot of things. 
but I chose to do different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, you see some of the ramifications because you chose that. You're just right. like, well, look at your daughter masters, dude. Yeah. I mean, dude, how, would you ever think of doing that? Huh? Oh, well, going to school and doing and that shit? All no, that. You never, see? I never thought about and it. And that blows that, that. That's another thing where you're just like, I shaped this human right. to be way better than what I was. Right. And right. you learned from what you got brought up at. Yep. And it just, it's, it's. It's always building upon itself. Going the right way. Yeah, exactly. But in, unfortunately, in some families, it doesn't. It mm-hmm. just kind of planes and goes the same way for everybody, you know, and, and whatever. But I, you know, I mean, it's, I don't know. There's so much more to be said about why there's environments like this. Yeah. Not like this, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. The war zone. Why is there a war zone? Yeah. Why is there a place that in California where cops won't fucking go? How is that okay? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not okay at all. Like, how is that accepted in society at all, period? It shouldn't be. Right? But we do. You know what I mean? We talk about, you know, people are in those situations and nothing's changing for them, right? Obviously, nothing that's being done is helping fucking any of it. So it's not the right way to be doing it, right? Those people have nothing to lose. Those no. are the people you have to be the most careful around. Oh, yeah. Because they don't have anything to lose. And that's why you go into these rich neighborhoods and they have the police going around watching their houses. Yeah. Because they have shit to lose, dude. Oh, yeah. And like they're yeah, not going to do... Yeah, exactly. right. That's where you go to go get shit. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to go kill somebody. I mean, I don't know. They have a bunch <laughs> of shit to lose. But, but it's those fucking homeless people who are on drugs. They don't have anything to do. They don't have anything to lose. Well, like, I mean, think they don't about care. this, though. Like, think of the mental state of somebody who oh, is God. okay with losing it all yeah. to get away from it. You know what I'm trying to say? That's crazy. Like, like just think about it. Just to think about, like, being, like, like, I hate thinking about it, but I'm just like, fuck dude what if i lose my job and then i fucking can't pay the rent and then right. where am i gonna go with the rent like i don't i don't want to have that mindset so right. i i try to think positive and try to be more like this is what i have to do this is what has to be done if i want to do what i want to do right exactly but i mean i mean in a, a mental state where you want to escape your reality so bad that you'll lose everything for it like people don't look at that side of it. Yeah, don't get me wrong i mean hell i'm prone to addiction addiction you know what i mean i know it yeah. You know what I mean? I know that my family has addiction issues and so forth. So I, I watch myself when I start doing this or that because I can see it like, yeah. instantly. I hear That's you. That's why you get something in your head and you just fucking chase after it uncontrollably because you have to. It's an addiction. You're addicted to that idea. Yeah. You're addicted to some, you have, but you have those things like comedy and playing your music or me, comedy and photography, my kids and all these things that keep me away from fucking shooting heroin. Yeah. Or being the alcoholic right. or something you know like I mean? that. And it's like, you know, because I know that if I didn't have all these things going on, I'd be fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like, have to keep myself occupied. That makes sense. So, but I don't know, man. I have this firm belief that um, there's one thing that we spend that we don't know how much of it we have. And we don't get any of it back. That's time. You don't know how much you have. I don't know how much I have. You don't know how much you have, right? So every minute and every moment you, d- you have should be worth your time. Yeah. And you should look at every situation that way. Is this worth my 10 minutes, my 30 minutes, my hour? Because you don't get that back. You know what I'm saying? Look at oh, who the guy who just passed away, right? What's his name? Um, I, only met, I never physically. Oh, Justin. Right. I never met him. I mean, I saw him do comedy twice. He was funny. Yeah. I would like to have met him. He's a nice guy, too. Right? And, he's, and I've, I, just, a lot of people said some good things about him. But did he probably didn't think he was well unless you know i don't know how he died yet yeah right? see that's so hard like so many things pop up where you're just like like what was the situation to that like i saw a post where it's just like hey if you if you're sad if you're angry if you're upset look for help right and that's one of those things where i'm just like that makes sense because you know you never know the situation of what somebody else can bring to the table for you right exactly talking to people i mean we all i mean i'm sure i mean i know how my, my mental things you know what I mean? I, I didn't until recently even discuss like my the, when having suicidal thoughts and bullshit because I did for years, but I never told people about yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it finally got to the point where I almost did it, and uh, I was like, okay, you know, this ain't right. And um, now I look at it as like I talk about it more of like we all have those downs. Yeah. Right? Like we can all get away from it. We're all. It, it doesn't have to come to that. I don't know. If, I mean, mind you, I'm not trying to assume that's how dude. Why dude's not here? I don't know what happened. I know nothing about it. Yeah. I'm not trying to direct it that way, so let's get that clear right away. But um but yeah, I mean that guy, you know, when you go, do you wanna know you wanna know that you spent your time wisely, right? That every moment you spent it on was worth your time. You know what I'm saying? And people and things that aren't, that's it. Don't do it anymore. Yeah, because I, I especially when you grow when you're getting older and you grow up, you're just like you re- I always I always try my best to always remember the good times over the bad. Right. Because 
you know what? Unfortunately, the bad stuff happens sometimes. But when you put it on a pedestal and you keep bringing it up and you keep thinking about it, it just keeps piling on itself. Yeah. So your like scale of like good and bad never evens out or right. never gets to that point where it should be balanced. I mean, we have our moments. Yeah. That's what we do. That's yeah, what every to. human does. Right. But if you can at least overcome one of those, that means that your good moment will always overpower the bad one. Right. If you don't just let the bad pile up and you're like, if, if it's one bad situation plus 16 other ones you're still talking about yeah. versus, you know, yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's always going to overlap it. And I think people that live too far in the past, right, because you're living in all those bad situations. Exactly. So yeah. You have to get past them. Obviously, for some people, it's debilitating and they can't. Yeah. But, and, you know, I don't know, but the biggest, I guess the biggest takeaway from this, you never know what anybody's going through at all. And you just got to, like, you know. Keeping up. Uh, that's why I always. I mean, I know. I know. I shouldn't do it in Zuni and Sent, uh, Zuni and fucking San Mateo. But I probably <laughs> am gonna fucking say hi to somebody that passes me by, and it's probably gonna be either <laughs> from every other experience I've had a good thing, but you still gotta remember that yeah. there is that possibility. It could go south pretty fast. And yeah, and you just gotta just live by the moment, like you said. Like you don't know. I don't know. No. You don't. But you gotta live by the. Mo- I mean, you gotta live. You know, you definitely got to live. And, I mean, if that makes you feel good or to say, I mean, because sometimes you, you might make somebody's day. Yeah. That's that's the thing. You may make somebody, you may, somebody may have been ignored all day long, you know, and you said hi to them. That's, that's what hurts the most at, like, the retirement home. Right. Because I work in the kitchen. So you, I mean, you know what I mean. You work yeah. in a retirement home where these people don't come and see, these families don't see them. Even the nursing staff. Yeah. They'll neglect some of them where, like, you know, they have call lights where they're just like, I need help, well, help me. Let's not say where you're working. <laughs> I work at a <laughs> shitty facility known as, I'm just kidding. But that's that's true, though. That's yeah. one of those things where you're just like, why would you not? This lady just needs her blanket pulled to her shoulder. Yeah. Like, you're going to oh, go wow. help this other person because this other person probably gave you $20 or something. Oh, okay. And see, that's kind of disheartening, too, is, like, they don't treat everybody the same. Right. And that's, like. What what this guy probably had a shitty like a shitty upbringing and he's a little de- depressed or mad. Yeah. Don't take it out on him. Yeah, like he yeah. just wants some help. That's why his call lights on. Go yeah. help him. That's it. Yeah, and plus he's probably looking for interaction sometimes. Yeah, some people are just like, oh, he just wants attention. I can't go deal with him right now. I'm just yeah. like, what did you just say? Like your job is to answer the call light within 15 seconds. Right. Like I, what are you talking about? You know, it's depressing. That's so honestly like think about it like it's so depressing in those things like those places yeah dude oh like, my god oh, all these people just like slumped over and you I, should uh, yeah you should see I've me been through them. i've been through them. you yeah. should see me on friday they have karaoke oh yeah and okay so they have activities every day the same day but it's something different right the like monday's bingo tuesday's uh fucking doing artwork thursday's this whatever Friday is karaoke day Uh and I go up from the kitchen and go sing karaoke my heart out. (laughs) I fucking entertain these people and they come for the karaoke more than anything else during the week. They're like, everybody's all wheeled. Yes. They (laughs) want to see somebody have fun. And I'm, I dude, I am fucking, I'm singing pretty woman pointing at this old lady who has an (laughs) eye missing, but she loves it. And that's the beautiful. That's what I love the most is because she literally was like, ah, you're so amazing. Thank you so well, much. And I'm just like, it was for you. I hope you know yeah. this. It was, it was to make you guys feel better. Right. And that's, well, it's so, it's the same thing with the, the food that they eat. Yeah. Like they're just like, I've always wanted, you know, grilled cheese, but I can't because my teeth are, I don't have teeth. And I'm just like, I got you. You're like, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I could get that extreme. Like, I'll be like, it for let me just, <laughs> yeah, hold but, on. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, you you come up with these things like I, I've I've learned more through my YouTube tutorials uh, to like cook for these old people yeah. because just because the book says like they can't have French fries yeah. they can't have any French fries because it's too hard for them I'm just like okay well maybe I should make some steamed potatoes or something or maybe yeah. a hash brown that doesn't get cooked over the fucking stove or something so yeah. it's still soft for them and they like it and right. you just find these different that lady's super happy now yeah. because like oh she gets tomatoes that are chopped up in little squares instead right. of a fucking whole tomato what's yeah. she gonna do with the whole yeah, tomato she pick the damn thing up. exactly <laughs> dude it's crazy yeah 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 no it's well, see, but that's where you're like on those Fridays, you're make, you're doing something for those people that they can look forward to. Oh, dude, that's 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 you what it's what all, all about too. Yeah. And 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 hoping to get into pension, but well, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you didn't have to say that. Somebody's got a will. We all know. Somebody's got a will that they're trying <laughs> yeah. to give off on somebody, not their fucking bastard son that doesn't come <laughs> visit them. Oh man. 
Well, see, they already were in the will. That's why they're in that home because the bastard son's paying with it. Yeah, they're just like, uh, well, I already know what I'm getting after all this. <laughs> Little did they know, right. they rewrote the will <laughs> at the nursing home. <laughs> when they were half asleep. There you go. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's sad, man. My, my, uh, so my, um, my dad's father, I never met him. He died when my dad was like six or seven. He burned to death. Whoa. Um, he was a truck driver. And uh, he tra- he drove uh, chemicals around, so he got hit, um, burst into flames, burned to death. Right, so he he didn't have his real dad, and uh, my, his stepdad, which is the grandpa I know, you know what I mean. Um, he uh, he's the one that helped, that kind of ra- you know raised them or whatever. And now I can't remember where the fuck I was going with this. Oh, so anyway, so he got really sick, and he ended up in a home. So I would go down to El Paso and see him every chance I got. Man. Oh, see, that's 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 and good. It was just so sad, man, because every time I was there, he was like, I'm going to get out of here soon, man. And I knew he wasn't. Yeah, see, that and sucks. He, just, like, he was in that wheelchair, and he, and, and he was going deaf. But he would, every time, like, I'd, take, I'd like, take him to go eat, come bring him back. And, and he would just like, next time you come, I'm going to be home. I'm going to be home. And it was just so sad. Yeah. Like walking through that place and. All these people are looking at you like, oh, there's a person in here. Yeah, that's you know what I mean, because it just they it, they just get left there and forgotten about. That's and so they, true. Nobody think you know you don't think people don't think about that shit. You there's know? this one guy, one guy who his wife had a stroke and he comes every day to feed her lunch. Oh wow, you know why? Every day. You know why? That was a prize piece right there, bro. Damn. He's, he's all about. I bet you she. Oh my god. <laughs> he, she made his eyes roll to the back of his head. He, <laughs> she, she can't even do it anymore. And he's like, I'm taking her flowers every fucking. Day. I know what I need you to do for saying? my woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you would. You would that absolutely. Makes sense, you so. would fucking be there like every day, hoping she'd come out of it. You know? uh, <laughs> and you're yeah, you're just like you I remember mean? those days. And it's those ones that weren't that are there by themselves. Like nobody's visiting. Exactly. <laughs> just They're just like I'm not. Even, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. That's how my mind works. Sorry. But you know what I'm saying, though. No, for real, though. That, that, I bet you'd ask him. He'd be like, oh, my God, you don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I do. And that, that, that's what makes me crazy, too, is, like, I want to be, like, be like, you're one of the only guys that I see that comes and helps your wife every day. Yeah. Can you tell me why? Yeah. And he's and just he's like. Say, oh, my God, you should have seen this thing she used to do. Buddy. <laughs> buddy. How old are you? <laughs> how old are you? Can I even tell you what I did? What happened? I think a lot of shit is behind that, man. You know, I was just talking to me and this friend were talking the other day about this girl we know. And she's always with this fucked up dude, you know, and won't leave him. And I'm like, it's because he's fucking hung like a horse, bro. He puts it to her, you know, and he's, she's like, I just fucking keep dealing with it. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And we do it too. You know what I mean? Guys do it too. It's like, you know, I, I tell my friends all the time when they're in a shitty relationship, I was like, hey, that next girl's going to do all the same shit. It's not just her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too disheartened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't worry. There's more out there. They'll do all the things that she does that you like. You know what I mean? But I don't know. Gotta I don't go know. fishing. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. You know, there's always <laughs> someone out there. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's fun. It's, it's sad, though, man. It just, you know, nobody talks about that shit, how people just get stuck in fucking homes. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's one of those things, too. And it's just, like, that's why I've done this job for so long is because I know, like, it's one of those jobs where it's never going to end. No. There's no. always going to be old people rolling in yes. every day. Yeah, rolling in and out. Yep. Yeah. Like That's literally sure. and figuratively. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. Sitting on the way in and laying down on the way out. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, you know, it's funny is I'm in an industry like that too where it's like no matter what, I'll always have a job because no matter how bad it gets, things still have to get moved around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Very true. So it's like, I mean, it's like people who work at glass shops or, you know. Or the morgue. The morgue, right? I have a friend, dude, man, I got a friend who, who up in Colorado who owns a, he owns one of those places, man, and it's it's a good business. It's never gonna stop. <laughs> no, no, no. It, they stay busy, and I mean, it's not like he ain't making money doing it. You That's know so saying? true. You know what I mean? But it's if everything has its niche, I guess, right? That yeah, because that you think about it, and you're just like, ah, damn, it would be kind of weird to move a dead body or like have to like see it all the time and stuff right. too. But then that guy's just like, I see this every day. This is work. Yeah, this is yeah. what I do. Who's else gonna do it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somebody else can make that money. I'll yeah, do it. You know? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I cornered the market on this bad boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't. I mean, that's. I mean, it takes. I think it takes a special kind of person to want to do that shit, though. That really does. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, man. I'd freak the fuck out. <laughs> I mean, you know, dressing up some dead body with lipstick and shit. I don't. Yeah, right. Why do they always lo- have the same color palettes? <laughs> do they all have like? Do they all have like experience? Like, are they? Do they go to those schools to learn that shit? What is it? Um, like a, not Esther. What? Where do they do makeup? What is that called? Cosmetology. Uh, right. Do they have to like do cosmetology first to like do their hair and shit, and then they be, then they start fucking with bodies? Like, I don't know. You gotta how learn. <laughs> you gotta learn how to tease us some <laughs> hair first <laughs> before you can be a mortician. You all have right. to like go to cosmetology first. Yeah, imagine if the mortician <laughs> was just like, yeah, I'm gonna put him in this sweatshirt. 
and t-shirt and, <laughs> and then let's go buddy unless uh, like because i've seen i've heard that like family members would be like this was his favorite thing to wear yeah. like he always had this on and then then that makes sense where they're just like oh well you know they put this on him <laughs> that but could be so interesting though <laughs> most of the time it's just like holy shit like what did you think this person liked this suit because yeah. this this is uh it's a pretty nice suit <laughs> like um man these are crotchless pants yeah but he wore them all the time all he the time them. Assless Could chaps. You please put them on. Yes, the leather jacket and the leather hat, please, because he loved it. Yeah. I imagine you, you open it up and it looks like people from the Blue Oyster Cult. The there Blue you Oyster go. Right. <laughs> it's like holy shit, Judas Priest. <laughs> or like or like on uh, Average Joe's on a um, dodgeball. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, with the fucking. <laughs> it's like no, but it was her favorite thing to wear, <laughs> or it was favorite thing to wear. You know, handcuffs and shit. You know what I mean? No, it's that, it could get pretty crazy. I'm sure. I mean, I mean, my community. You know, a lot of these people die, and they uh, they'll like candy out their caskets and shit. Oh, like the you paint know? job of yeah, their car or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's that, pretty crazy. That is super, that is intense too. Because yeah. then, I know that they're like that's a lot of money. Oh yeah, a yeah. lot of money. And I I mean, I'm sure there's some kind of uh, a deal that is struck, right? It's usually somebody who knew the guy, but still, it's not cheap. I mean, those paint jobs are insane. It's funny. It's awesome now because a lot of those painters that do those multicolored paint jobs um, are actually seeing the true money for it now because it'd be like i mean and I mean, it's funny as i was watching uh josh i was watching i literally was just watching his uh his interview with you the other day and uh he was talking about rob vanderslice who's like yeah he's what you know i know him too you he's know? done so many like oh yeah he was huge in the late 90s early 2000s for like some of the top cars and now he's painting you know he's painting a bunch of badass cars too but you know what i mean it's like back then he'd do these crazy tape paint jobs for you know four thousand dollars or something which was like nothing for all the time and like i think one time i talked to him and he was like i think i figured it out and it's like a dollar 60 an hour <laughs> damn like it was nothing like he was losing his ass doing it but you see other places where they're just like this is twenty thousand oh, yeah. dollars just the paint job yeah, and you're just yeah. like what exactly and now now these guys are getting paid the way they should have been for years to do that work because it's so much time and just effort to make it well, those pinstripes and shit like oh, that that's a lot have of a work. steady hand like that or all the all the overlays with the candies and the and the patterns and so forth and and not losing yourself and what goes over what's crossing over what and oh, doing that. Okay, yeah. I mean, not that I know a lot about it, I don't. But I mean, it, it just, looks like a lot of work. Oh fuck yeah, it is hours and hours and. But I mean, I think Rob's got big old balls of tape from cars he's done, where he just pulls all the tape off and puts them in a big ball. Oh, you know, okay. And stuff. I think I seen it on an interview one time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's intense, but it's awesome that people are finally starting to make the money for their art because that's art too just kind of like what we're doing and everything it's just his form of it yeah you know what i mean we all have our our form of expression it's just different you know whether it be a car or comedy or painting, painting whatever or whatever you're into i mean there's an express every there's an expression and there's a there's somebody out there somewhere that likes it and like there's some comics that i'm sure we see and we're just like but there's somebody out there that thinks it's hilarious yeah. you know what i mean and we're just talking about that I'm yeah yeah, I'm not everybody's thing, for sure. I know I'm not. I mean, I've gotten lucky. I usually get laughs, but that doesn't mean everybody's going to fucking laugh at me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't expect them to, but I'm going to try. Yeah. You know what I mean? Try to win them over with something. I was telling on hell. I was like, honestly, I don't care if guys laugh. My comedy is just for the women. <coughs> because right. it's like my perspective is a woman. So it's like, why would I try to talk to guys? Right. Well, and a lot of guys won't see that perspective right because yeah. we're just so settled on our own absolutely right but i don't know I'm a, I'm a firm believer that i don't have one opinion that can't change that's so true yeah <clears throat> and i'm it, the same way you know open-minded I mean? very open-minded everybody should be that way yeah you can't yeah. just put your d- heels in the ground and this is all i ever think about yeah. the situation forever yeah, you you end up discovering more things especially when you get older like when i was younger i thought like oh i was the coolest goth kid ever with fucking eyeliner and stuff like that yeah i've grown up and i'm just like that's for some people or that's the time of what they do that for. I yeah. mean, it's it just you get you grow out of your perspective of life. Right. Exactly. And sometimes it goes in the right path. Sometimes it goes in the shithole, but you're still learning. Right. And it's again, it's a downfall or it's an uprising. Right. And you should always be learning. You should always be. I don't know. I mean, new new information is available all the time for things, you know. Right. Just, what's what's going to happen when we see an alien? Oh man, I'm waiting for the day. That's going to blow <laughs> everyone's mind. I mean, but everybody, is it though? But everybody. Is it? Like, that would assume that we all think that they don't exist. Like it's going to blow our mind to finally see what they look like. I think I honestly think though is that 
okay, this is my theory. <laughs> this is what I think. Is that the government knows what they look like. Oh, yeah, so sure. they let Hollywood portray an alien in so many different ways. And so when it finally does come, you're just like, holy shit, that looks like the Predator. I was just going to say, oh, look, Predator. That's what yeah, right. Or, or, or the alien. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I knew. I, I'd seen it before. Yeah. And we have all. There's so many aspects of aliens now. Yeah. Like every. There's like. Uh, I saw this video on YouTube one time where it's just like the alien race book from A to Z. <laughs> and I'm just like, holy fuck. A lot of people have been thinking about this a For lot a longer than I have. But, you know, I, I mean, the more and more I think about it, what is your mindset as far as what if it is just like some future us coming back and or some other race of us somewhere else? Or a multi-dimensional thing. I, like, I'm honestly starting to really buy into that shit. Yeah? Dude, I freak out about the multiverse all the time. Oh, dude, I just watched the new Doctor Strange. Yeah, oh my dude, God. right. Oh, I'm telling you. I was just like, Actually, maybe that is what dreams are. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's, that blew me away, too. Like, it, you have yeah. this epic dream, and you're just like, okay, it was just a dream. But was it? Was it? It's actually you somewhere else. Because they don't even explain that well. Like, we don't even know why we fall asleep and why our brain goes through this process of healing ourselves and getting into this, like, whole sense of that like right. that's a, that's all still new to us yeah we, we we don't even know all the discoveries on this earth no fuck no yeah like you see they, they discover shit all the time different bugs different sea creatures and it's just like oh okay i totally didn't know what was going on at yeah, all yeah 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 there's there's so much just still happening no matter what that they, you know but so yeah. so i like that that you still have this like open-mindedness of oh, like yeah. what I don't know what can happen. No. And then, and hopefully it's embrace embraceable. Like yeah. I can embrace it in a way that I'm not like, oh, fuck, my life's ruined now. Oh, right, right. I mean, you you got to, I don't know. I think you just have to be open to any idea in a sense. I mean, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that I don't think certain things are like ridiculous. I'm a man. It ain't nobody humping me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Just, they're, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not. <laughs> you know how many times they get asked? Like, they so really do. Like, no, it didn't fucking happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, it's, it's. You know, you got to be open to new everything, man. Like, I don't know. I, I, for, I, I believe you don't learn at least one thing every day. You're fucking wasted your day. That's you should always learn something yeah. about somebody, about something. History, anything. Whatever. Anything. Like, you should always be trying to learn more about something or, or something you're into or whatever. You know, I mean, even, and even in comics or even comics that are like the best comics ever, they're still learning. They're still growing. And those people that stay the best know that. Right, that you're still gonna grow, you're still gonna always be this different person or have these different aspects of looking at things and so forth, you know, is how I feel. That's how you stay successful in those situations rather than just kind of leveling off, only having the same ideas, and then that's it. Yeah, you know what I mean? That makes sense. I don't know. How do, so, then how do you feel about like people that are so like woke and trying to change what people think? Oh, I tell you what, man, I tell you what, boy. <laughs> well, here, here's here, here's so okay. I actually wanted to talk about this. That's good. That's a good. I brought well, it up. No, but this is this is and, and it's and I still haven't figured out how I was going to say this. And I it, it came up. The, I almost thought about doing a bit about this. But um, you you I've, everybody watches TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy, this guy named Gifted Hands on there. Have you seen this guy? I don't think so. He's this he's this he's this black uh, African-American dude. Um, with like no like very like no arms no hands right singing this fucking amazing song and his name is gifted hands he doesn't have hands right like they're very tiny or whatever but, he's but still. his name is gifted hands and he's fucking talented as hell right and he's up there with a name like that knowing obviously doesn't have there's, any yeah there's right hands. But he's embracing what he's doing, right? And it's like, if that guy can go through life, I mean, I mean, that's, there's no way he said, oh, I'm going to call myself Gifted Hands. I didn't think it was funny somehow or uh, ironic. Yeah. Right? So, like, if that person who's in that situation can get past that on their own, uh, you know, how, how do you have all these people that are barking up for that person that is fine with what his situation is yeah. and doesn't want to be treated differently? Like, some people don't want to be put out on that, like, because they are different. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, sure, you want to defend people and so forth, but not to the point where now you've drawn all this focus on them. You know what I mean? They just want to be a normal person like you and I, that you walk by them and you acknowledge that they're there, not walk by and pretend they're not there because you don't want to acknowledge they're in a wheelchair, acknowledge they're missing a leg or yeah. whatever, because some people will do that. They'll just walk by them and ignore them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, and it's funny as, and, you know, you all these people that sometimes I feel are part of this whole, uh, social justice thing just for the the, the fact of having a, stand, a side to be on. No. Right? I don't know. I mean, it's like, it doesn't make sense to me sometimes. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there isn't things that shouldn't be said. You know, we I feel I feel 100% into we have freedom of speech to say whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. But, 
in the right venue, right? There's some things that obviously, you know, I don't think racist remarks should be made. Yeah, you're not going to a church and be like, fuck this, fuck that, right, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Because you know better. Yeah. Right? You don't walk into a church and do that. Yeah. You don't walk into this situation and do that. But some, but people, because they're on this social media hub where they don't have a face, people will never see them again, whatever. They feel they can say whatever the hell they want about anything uh, and, 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 and to offend somebody or not. And then on the same hand, say say they can believe that that's good or bad what they're saying. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, oh, man, I know where I'm trying to go with this. But, you know, they, you can be totally against somebody's opinion or totally for it and fight for either one. Yeah. And, and nobody knows who either people are. And at that point, you're just picking a side because maybe that opinion is more popular than the negative exactly. one. Which people should have opinions on both sides of the spectrum no matter what it was. Yeah. Like I heard you and Caleb talking about um, – <coughs> about like um, government stuff, yeah. Or, you know, Republican versus Democrat. Like, I don't know where the fuck I stand on that shit, but I don't feel like there should be any one person that all their I- all their ideas is completely on this one fucking line. Come on, yeah. You have to have a different thought. There's no way things can just keep functioning the way they are without being open to another idea that isn't part of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm only picking this because that's what my party is picking. Yeah, dude, I dude, I feel that all the time, too. Like, I have this joke where they're just like, what side are you on? What would you pick? And I'm just like, I would abort a baby with a gun. <laughs> and that's literally this side and this side. Yeah, what are yeah, you going to get mad at me for? Because yeah, yeah. I picked both of them yeah, right yeah, away. Yeah. Which one do you want? Yeah, <laughs> which one do you, you want? You guys can all be mad now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beauty of finding that in comedy. Because, yeah. like, literally somebody thinks about it and they're like, holy shit, which one is right or wrong? Right. Because they both sound pretty wrong but then you think about it, it's like but then is it because yeah. you we've already seen it with the whole like the abortion thing and everything right. that's coming up now and you're just like there's a double side to this whole thing yeah and i, I mean in my, in my opinion that is i don't think anybody should tell somebody what they can and can't do that's that's just fact right i mean come on and then you don't know i mean you don't know the situation that person's in you don't know you know you don't know you know so it's like how can anybody justify saying you can't do that you can't you have to do that like, fuck you yeah, that's they, so. got the, they can do what they should be able to do what they want. And see, that's what we hope and what we think America is. Yeah. And then you end up having this thing where it's just like, oh, but you can't say this word. And I'm just like, wait, right. what? Yeah, since when, man? Words. Yeah. Like, fucking words. Dude, I remember in, in high school, even in middle school, like we called people fags all the oh, time, called people yeah. gay, yeah. called people lesbian. Absolutely. All the time. It was it was what was part of the staple at that time of of culture. Right. You never said it. I never said told somebody oh you're acting like a fag saying they were being like a gay person yeah it was just a term mind you i can understand how it's offensive right i get it you know what i mean now that you think about it but at the time i never said it being offensive to a gay person yeah exactly and the person I that you would. said it to never yeah. was offended either right but and and I, and I get some of it to a point in the same hand i mean we gotta have thick skin to something because now you got these people that Mind you, again, I've, so I've been at the same job for 24 years, right? So I've seen how much it's changed. The transition. From when I first started to today. And it's like today somebody does something wrong and you're picking on them if you say, you know, hey, you're not doing this right or whatever. Oh, they're picking on me and this and that instead of just correcting the action. There you go. Right? Because now it's just the defensive that, oh, well, they're just picking on me. You know what I mean? And it's like part of that. You know what I'm saying? So just a different, a different world. You know what I mean? And, and um, but like that's it makes me too much coddling. There's too much. How did that come about though? That's what blows me uh, away. I don't know. Man. It's like especially growing up, I was like, God, I was always like picked on, or I was like, you know, trying to be the tough kid, or you know, it never was the whole fact that like I'm just gonna submit and I uh, I just have to go with what's going on. I'm just like I have my own thoughts and opinions. Like right. that that's why I do the stuff I do or I say the things I do is because it's funny or it's truthful or it's just what has to be said. Right. And that happens a lot less now. Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, it, it sucks when you got to be afraid to say something. Like, because of how it's going to be taken or misconstrued or whatever, or taken out of context. You know what I mean? Like, that example that happened to me, that was literally taken out of context. If you saw that post, you would think I was the biggest mm-hmm. fucking asshole in the comedy scene. Yeah, see? Oh, this guy thinks he's so good in the beginning. <coughs> he you know just I mean? started and he's already saying stuff like this. Right. Like, that's that's the wrong idea to have coming into the comedy. Yeah. Because we all don't know what to say when we first start. No. None no. Of, I, like, I, dude, I've said some stupid ass shit where I'm just like, oh, on hell, it's, you, you got to do better. Yeah. You can do better. Or that wasn't that bad. Maybe you just change it up a little bit. Right. But at that point, I'm still being the perspective of what's going on. Right. Compared to like somebody else telling me like that's offensive. Don't ever say that again. 
This dude was laughing his ass off, dude. I don't know what you mean. That's not <laughs> yeah, offensive. Yeah, everybody laughed. I don't know what's mm. so offensive about it, but yeah, I know it's. But it's I don't know people. I, I don't I don't get super sensitive people. I don't understand it. But then I grew up in a time when you weren't. You know, hell, I just had all my family at my house yesterday, right? You can't do a goddamn thing without somebody fucking you up. Oh shit! You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You do one little scare, but he's just waiting for you to trip so they can just fucking right. clown you. That's how my family's always been. That's Thank how you. we have always been. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's how I grew up. You don't, you can't just be sensitive to somebody saying something. You have to either have a response or have a thick skin or realize it's just somebody saying being funny or whatever it may be. Versus like, it debil- debilitates somebody because you know what their mindset. Yeah, is. just because it makes you feel better. Yeah, but in the same hand, then again, this goes back to like mental capacities and illnesses and so forth. It could be that somebody so mentally ill it does debil- debilitate them to be called something because they're not strong enough mentally to get past it, right? That makes sense. I mean, again, there's there's two sides to every fucking coin. You know what I mean? There's a different side to everything. So, yeah. like, I can look at it my way where I'm like, okay, you can tell me just about anything. I'm not going to get hurt. You know what I mean? It's unless you put it online and try to, you know, do some bullshit. You know That's what I mean? where that but, balance comes in. You know what I mean? But, I mean, in person, and yeah, fucking, I, uh, let's see, we were at that open mic at Dry Heat, and Christian's like, Oh, look at Cardo Matt. He takes up like four seats up here, you know? Uh, oh, fuck huh. yeah, that's funny. Right uh, on. Yeah. I mean, that was, you know, it wasn't a lot of work to get to that joke. But, but you know that it's like. Or you calling me Cardio Mad the first time you met me. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. That was funny. Even though, and someone else called me it later thinking they're all original. I was like, nah, Angel said it first. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's, you you know, I don't, that's funny. Like, you can't take offense to that shit. And somebody else would, that would have fucking ruined their whole day and. I can't. The guy doesn't even barely know me. I just met you. Yeah. I had just met you that day officially. Literally. And it's like he's all cardio mad, cardio mad. Yeah. Oh, and I was like, I don't do any cardio. Yeah. And that, but I mean, if somebody else, that could have been like, nope, I fuck, fuck this shit. I don't want to be around these people. He's yeah, making right. funny money. You know him, you know. And it's just people take it differently. And know? that's good. That 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 aspect is what we need more of. Is like right. everybody just coming in and it's just like. Uh, maybe I should not be offended as so easy, right? I should have thicker skin. Yeah. I what mean, if they don't even say anything about you, but you right. still get offended because they made fun of somebody else in the room? Like right, right. that always blows me away too. And it's like you shouldn't say that about him. It's like he was he laughing. Didn't say anything about it. He yeah. was he was enjoying it. What are you concerned about? Yeah. Do you have some problems with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. He didn't have problems with it. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't get it. But it's. Pe- I mean, and I, I get people standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves. Okay. I don't like bullies at all. Never have, because again, again, I was the I'm very fucking white complected. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I got fucked with all the time. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I hate it. I hate it. So I, and matter of fact, I, some of my biggest problems I had when I used to, I used to have like the biggest fucking temper, bro. The worst. I mean, anything just set me off. To the point, I mean, road rage incidents where it was me chasing down five guys in a car by themselves, and I'm trying to pull them out. You know what I mean? Just flip out. But because I saw people like that who would fuck with people as being bullies. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, pull up next to you, start flipping you off, telling you to get out of the car. And like, all right, fine, let's go. And then you chase them down to the house and they don't want to get out of the car. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, you were a big man in the car five minutes ago. Where are you at now? Uh, but because I hate bullies. That makes sense. So I used to be really bad with that shit. And most people that are bullied just have their own kind of mental trauma where they're just like. Because they I, got fucked with. Yeah, I have to put myself higher than that person that made right. me feel like shit. Exactly. And you're just like, this dude is probably not even in that sense the same guy that you were thinking about because he flipped you off or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's always the thing, too. It's just, like, don't bring your repressed memories to the comedy show. Yeah, yeah, Like, because yeah. that, <laughs> dude, everyone, especially in comedy, dude, all of us have had some kind of trauma. Oh, for sure. Like, that's why we try to be funny is because we're just, like, we didn't get, we, we were neglected or we just yeah. didn't have the right friends or whatever the case may be. That's why we're there is yeah. looking for that gratification that we are doing something good. That we exist. Yeah. That we're some yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, that's, that's part of it. That's, that's why we make people laugh and. You know, and, and shit like that because that's how we dealt with something, right? Like, that's just what I assume. Some of the funniest people had the hardest fucking lives. Yeah, dude, and you <laughs> hear it too. Like, you, you're like, when you hear comedy, like really big comedians, and you're just like, holy shit, you did have a shitty life. Yeah. I get it now. I yeah. so get it. And it's crazy because so many of us in this comedy scene probably have so much in common. Oh, dude, that, yeah, and you not see. Not even, it. you know, we, I'm sure we all have a story that's somewhat in lines with somebody else's. You know what I mean? And I mean, it's good that most people get along for the most part. Yeah. But, like, that's always something to think about, too, when you're not getting along with somebody. Like, you don't know their story. Like, yeah. and let's go back to this cruise thing, right? So, I was pretty upset because I wanted to talk to him. He didn't want to talk. Mind you, 
the more I thought about it after the situation, I realized, hey, I'm this big fucking dude in his face telling him, let's go talk outside. Right? You know, and he's probably scared. You know what I'm saying? I get it. But, like, and actually just the other day at Red Door, um, I did a set. He was there. And I was there. Huh? I was there. Were you there? At the I la- watched that. The last weekend? Yeah. Or this last Wednesday? Yeah. And he actually opened the door for me and my friends as we walked out. And I didn't say thank you. Like a dick. Yeah. I just walked past him like, fuck this guy, you know? And afterwards, I'm like, what is your problem? You know what I mean? That was him kind of, in my opinion now, like, that's him giving an olive branch out. Like, to like, I mean, he didn't have to open the door. Yeah. He could just watch us walk by and then walk through it. Right. And so I get in the car and I'm driving back. I'm like, see, like now I'm being that person. Uh, and so like I've and like so instantly the next time I see him, I'm just going to like shake his hand and say, what's up? It's all yeah. good. Because that to me, if it was if he was still on that mindset, he wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't have. I would just walked you fucking walk past the door. Yeah, or don't later. even don't even acknowledge it or exactly. anything. So, you know, I'm a big enough person to know like I don't hold grudges unless it has to be held. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So, but yeah, so getting back to that, you know, that's where I stand on it now. I'm past it. You know what I mean? I'm past it. There's no reason for even, like, that is what it is. I mean, did me and him actually talk it out? No. But for some people, that's the all you'll ever get. Uh, that's true, too. You know what I mean? Some people can't admit they're wrong or won't. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they'll still have that mindset where they're like, I was wrong. So yeah. I hope he doesn't, under- I hope he sees that I'm trying to not worsen the situation or exactly. make, make it what it like you like literally you guys can yeah. beef it out or whatever but if he doesn't want to talk but he's at least like showing some kind of respect yeah. and he probably does have that mindset where it's like oh well it wasn't the best thing to do right and I, like, I don't even know the dude like I don't know him you know but so I, but I do like I looked back that day that Wednesday on the way home and I'm like yeah I should, that was dick that's not me to be that way yeah so like you know as far as I'm concerned next time I see him I'm just say what's up and that's it leave it at that but if it gets said again, something happens again. Now we're now we're in a different territory. Yeah. Now you already this is like okay. Now you've done it twice. Yeah, and no, it was established that it, I thought everything was cool. Yeah. So then that's there's no talking after that point. And they're just like that's then something just has to happen. This is where the mad comes out in well, Cardo this is, Mad. This is when you know you learn that this you know so all of us have a fucking all of us have a story. Hey, all of us have a story, dude. Man. You I don't know. know some of the nicest guys in the world. You don't know how they were. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you, like you telling me like how you're like this, you know, so much more angrier and so much more like aggressive and stuff. I'm just like, dude, you're a fucking teddy bear. Like I don't even Most see it. Most people would never get that. That's yeah. so crazy. Unless they knew me back yeah. then. You know, I'm how I got the uh, a good friend of mine. He's like my brother. His name's Eric. You know, and there's been there was time with me one time. He was with me and I was chasing some dude down. And he was just freaking the fuck out. Really? Like because he'd never seen me flip out. And a lot of people have not seen me flip out in years. Yeah. I, in fact, the last time I did, the last time I did flipped out that bad, I made some grown man do some grown man and two other guys, one guy cry and two other guys fucking freak out because I was ready to fucking box all three of them. Oh shit! And they weren't like they were like guys my size and shit like that. And it was funny. We were just talking about it the other day. It was in this car club I used to be in, and uh, we had this argument. I had this argument with this guy to the point where I had him crying and shit because I was ready to fuck him up. And uh, it's like that's how angry I got. Like so mad with this guy was this grown man was crying because I was ready to just you know what I mean yeah just wail and that was the last time I've gotten that mad dang but it's there like I know it's there you know I mean I learned it from my dad man he had a fucking shortest temper ever really oh when I was growing up man I, it's funny as I try to t- I want to start telling jokes about it I just ha- about how fucked <laughs> how fucking angry he was um, there was he uh, he got mad at my mom one time because he didn't put he put food on his plate but it wasn't a big enough plate. So he was pissed about it. So he just got the plate and fucking launched it at the roof. And it busted everywhere. Food's on the fucking ceiling and shit because the plate wasn't big enough. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. He just, like, trigger. And that's one of those things where you, you see it and yeah. you're just like, holy shit. Is, yeah. this, is this what I should do? Or When I'm mad, I just throw shit. Okay. Uh. Or punch shit through hole, holes uh. through walls or fight with people. Sounds right. Uh. You know what I mean? That's what I grew up believing because that's what I saw. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he just had the short. I mean, I mean he had a hard life. I mean, his dad died. Uh, my, my, you know, I do these jokes. I do this one joke about not being very religious, and the reason why is that when my grand, when my, when my grandpa, who I never met, died, uh, my grandmother got really heavy into religion, to the point where she would give time to the church. And when she'd do that, she'd take my dad and her sister and brother into orphanages. So he got like raised in orphanages and shit. So he like basically because she would be giving her time to the church because that was more her priority. That he didn't have a family, right? So. He had fucked up. He didn't have no idea how to be a dad. 
You know oh, what I'm saying? Okay. His, the important things are him, like his possessions and stuff. You know, I mean, his friends, because he didn't know. And like, I forgave him for being, a, you know, the daddy was. I mean, he was just at my house the other day, you know, and telling me how proud he is. He tells me he loves me now. I didn't hear that for years. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But um, he didn't know how to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. And that, again, that's just developing as you get older. Right. Like right. maybe it might take that dude. 30 years yeah. maybe it might take him a whole lifetime to realize yeah but exactly. still it, it might happen and some people just get it right away they're just like i fucked up i shouldn't say something like that yeah that makes that makes more sense if i did it. like you like you should have said thank you you yeah, didn't even think about it no i didn't i was just like still kind of on this like mindset like fuck this dude for not wanting to talk to me but not putting myself in his shoes for a second yeah like just imagine you know me and some big ass motherfucker in my face that i don't know Right, don't know nothing about him. He's asking me to go outside. And who knows that he's probably could have been in that situation before, and it didn't end well for him. Right, and I, and I don't know, you know, I don't know. So it's like, so I'll give him, I'll give him that part of it for sure. But like I said, he, to my opinion, the other day he's extended an olive branch. I didn't grab it, so now I'm the dick. Uh, so it's like I need. It's to like a game of now, tic tac toe yeah, here, yeah, buddy. Yeah. I'm gonna get you in the corner next <laughs> you know time. You know what I'm saying? But now, now I'm in the wrong. So it's like <laughs> now I'm like need to be the ma- the next time I see him and say, "Hey, what's up?" Like just wait for this connect four, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you got three of them, but I'm coming with the fourth. Uh, one. I'm but no, cool. no. But you know, I'm like, I, I, you know, but I'm a, I'm mad enough to know that lesson learned. Right, lesson learned. Mad enough to know that. And I'm mad enough also to admit when I should have said, "Hey, thanks for opening the door." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm mad enough to know that. Some people aren't. Some people will never admit they're wrong. Very true. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll yeah. shoot you before they can admit that they were wrong. Right, dude. right, right, right. So, especially nowadays, right? Because nobody wants to fight. They all want to pull out a gun. No, yeah. dude. <laughs> that's what makes it even worse now. Because remember the good old fashioned, like, let's go out on the street and finish, yeah. do this. If, yeah. if I lose, then I know that I shouldn't have stepped up to that sense. But yeah. I have to figure that out first, not fucking get shot by this fucking 15 year old that doesn't even look like he's ever held a gun before. Right. No, and, for sure. And that blows me away, too. It's like you see that way more often than the actual let's go talk. Right. Let's figure this out before shit gets too real. And it doesn't. Yeah. And that's how it should be. People should be able to talk to each other. But these days, people don't feel they can. Right. Or that they can share their opinion with somebody else, because obviously there was two differences of opinion here. Mine and his. Right. And nobody. How many people accept a different idea anymore? Right? Yeah. Somebody is so, so so many people are so just like streamlined. This is what I believe. This is my thought process. This is it, and you can't change my mind. So, how hard is it these days to talk to somebody because of that, right? It's because they're difficult. not going to maybe change their. They, you don't. You don't believe they will ever change their mindset because nobody does. You know, not a lot of people are receptive to a different opinion or whatever. You know, at all. So, I mean, it's it's hard to even in this situ- in this particular situation that we're talking about. I'm sure maybe that's probably why he didn't feel he could come talk to me about it. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe it's just an asshole. But th- again, that's that's you learning as well yeah. too. Like yeah. you'll you're learning about the experience with with somebody that's like this too. You just yeah. don't know if it's like something more traumatic, maybe just something upbringing. Maybe yeah. that's just how he portrays to other people as well too. So yeah, exactly. And again, I don't know his story. I don't know how bad he has it. I don't know if he's living in a house or in a fucking box somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, makes sense. You know what I'm saying? We don't. You know what I mean? Until now, I didn't know you lived here. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, this dude has a studio apartment. How <laughs> the fuck am I going to do a podcast <laughs> yeah. in a studio apartment? Oh, oh, it's got a bedroom. A bedroom. A bedroom. <laughs> but, I mean, the reality is, I mean, we don't we don't know how most of us are living, right? We don't know. Yeah, that's maybe true. Some, maybe, I'm sure, if you've been in it for three years, you have some friends in the comedy you know, area, and you know them and where they live and what they're about. But there's so many of us that people don't have a clue about. Yeah. Or, like, again, you go to a show, <laughs> you offend somebody, and you're like, why are they offended? Maybe it's just that the, the life I, they live, where yeah, they're at. Exactly. And, and and the second I saw it, the first thing I'm thinking is, like, what did I do wrong? Right? Like, I didn't think I did anything wrong, and I kept trying to replay it in my head. Like, where did I go wrong in saying any of this? Like, I don't remember doing anything wrong, you know? And, and I think it, part of it, I, or I think part of what was said is that, that I had made on, eye contact with, like, his girlfriend or something. Yeah. And I was like, well, if I did, it was unintentional. And now I will sometimes make eye contact with somebody when I do certain bits because I'm trying to get a reaction of them, like, in the same disgust right. I am when I'm saying it. Yeah. So I can say, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That's fucked up, right? Yeah. It's all about getting that reaction to feed off of. Right. Like, yeah, that's a fucked up idea. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm go. saying? Or um, just the other day I did. Uh, I do my my Gardunio's fat joke, whatever. And I instead of like making up a name for the cheese guy I talk about, 
I was like to the crowd, like, hey, what's your name? He's like, Justin. I was like, see, when Justin comes up with the cheese and this and start just kind of playing him oh, into okay, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It actually worked. It worked really well. And I'm trying to do that. I'm going to try to do that more often. That, that does engage the audience more, too. Exactly. Is because you can just be like, you see somebody and you're just like, oh, damn, dude, you looking big. And mm-hmm. then you actually can bring it into like a funny bit where you're right. just like, looks like you do too much creatine or something. Yeah. You know, just a little thing where it's just like, he probably gets it. He's like, ah, people told me that before. Right. Or shit like that. I hear this every time I'm in the front. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and then you're making them a part of it, right? So I used to do a lot of, uh, well, I, to, I haven't done that much lately, but a lot of forklift training. And so, you know, I used to say my class is in a death by PowerPoint where you're just like reading shit off a fucking board. You know, I'm in there trying to engage with people the whole time I'm talking. Yeah. Keep them in it so they're learning what I'm talking about. So it's like with comedy, I'm, like, cause I'm, that's what I'm trying to do as well, trying to keep them engaged with what I'm saying. It's just the fear of trying to make people laugh sometimes get me so nervous that I get away from the fact that I'm not focusing on the people anymore sometimes. So, I mean, again, with that situation, maybe I did do something wrong because I'm zoning in and out trying to be funny watch the audience not forget what the fuck i'm about to say right you know what i mean acknowledge that one person to be part of the joke or something exactly or just so they see that like you said the reaction and i've only really been doing comedy seti for like six months nah. right if you think about it yeah if you add all the times together you're yeah. just like it's about six months yeah i would say i am actually doing it and dedicating time to it and everything since january this year okay is what i would say i, I could say if i if somebody said when did you truly start doing comedy like photography People ask me all the time, how long have you been a photographer? Well, a photographer, four and a half years. Taking pictures, like 15 years. Uh, right? I can't say I 15 years ago as a photographer because I took a fucking picture or something. Yeah. Right? You did that picture, you know what I mean? But now, yeah, I'm a photographer. So the same thing with comedy. Yeah, for three years, I did it sometimes. Was I a comic? No. Fuck no. I wasn't dedicating my time to it. That would be disrespecting the art. But now in the last six months, going to as many open mics every time I have a chance and doing this and whatever, yeah, now I'm dedicated to it. I'm being, I'm a comedian trying to work through this. Yeah, and I love how you found that acknowledgement from like getting added to the group chat or something. Yes. And you knew you're just like, oh shit, fuck okay, I made it to the circle or something, right. you know. And that's it. And that's what you know that you want to be a part of the group that you're in. Right? And now your next, your next uh, goal is being booked on a show, exactly. and it's coming up. Christian yeah. got you on a show. Got me on the show. And of course, I hope for more everybody. There you go, right? <laughs> Anybody else? No, just kidding. Cardomad.com. There you go, Cardomad. Cardomad on Instagram. Cardomad Photography. I got too many Cardomad this and that. I got too much shit. <laughs> hey, brand yourself. Do you have a domain names? Uh, just actually, my only domain name is the www.cardomadphotography.com. That's okay, it. that's not bad. Um, on Instagram and everything else, I try to get all the Cardomad stuff where somebody else could. Okay, yeah. Right, right. But um, I mean... The photography thing has been out for a while. I'm barely on my Inst- I need to start pushing my Instagram comedy stuff a lot. Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? But That's why I always try to stay neutral to, like, my my comedy sense because I don't I, – I mean, I can do what everyone else does, and they just do, like, angellopezcomedy.com. Yeah. And then, like, okay, you'll know where to find me, but – if it's something people can remember where they're yeah. just like, Muse Me TV, that's just yeah. like, that's dope. Like, I do comedy. My name's Angel. Yeah. Check me out on Muse Me TV. Yeah. And you remember the, the Muse Me part because it's not, you don't hear it all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, even that's what, like, the comedy thing, I just, my comedy Instagram is just Cardo Matt. That's it. Because it's like, I realized with the Cardo Matt photography thing, adding the photography to the side of it, it just like makes it so much more like, oh, what is it again? Yeah. And or, or that's what you're only looking for. Right. It's like you have your Cardo Matt photography, but what if you posted like, two of your sets on there yeah and then that just blows everything they're like wait what there, you, yeah there's comedy on this page <laughs> yeah exactly it and says I, photography oh i could totally cheat the system and just say oh that's my comedy page now. yeah exactly that's, I what, I that. that's no, what i did that's what i did i start I, when i had my facebook page i started off with the facebook ca- page called xyz snapper because uh-huh. i was taking photography pictures uh-huh. and i would go to like comic cons and shit like that and take pictures of people in their costumes right post it online get some good likes because they were like oh i'm so glad you took a picture of my costume I, nobody was giving me any any reassurance that my costume was good or whatever yeah but you got a picture exactly it posted on there they ended up sharing it it ends up growing i ended up growing that page to fifteen thousand likes like followers and everything and then like i'm thinking about (laughs) it i'm just like i don't want people to know me as just the photographer like if they come to that page they should be able to see multiple contents of the podcast of me doing comedy of some of my photography so that they know that this is entertainment right not just the whole 
comedy or yeah. the photography or video gaming. I do that a lot too. I'll right. be streaming on. Well, I have. I haven't been doing it that much, but <laughs> streaming on Twitch. Like, I'd like, be doing it now if I wasn't doing the shit with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. That's not funny at all. <laughs> uh, don't look at me like that, Dulcie. <laughs> uh, Dulcie, you had some people in the comment section. Do you have anything to add? Is there anybody in there? Anybody chatting us up? Anybody want? Did you uh, have any inputs on this bad boy? I know you did grab the mic a few times, but we were going off on a tangent <laughs> rant. No. Okay, we're good. <laughs> um, let's let's do let's do one of our segments. We have a yeah. segment on this okay. on this show called random YouTube comment. Okay. So she's gonna pull up a random comment. Uh huh. It could be of any type of video. You have to guess what this comment is a video of. Thanks for always sharing. Do a really do a really great job, and you never let your ego get in the way. What do you think this video is about? <laughs> what do you think this Fuck. video is about? Oh God! You never let your ego get in the way. Oh. This has to be. <laughs> I feel like this has to be. It some, could be so many things. I feel like this is an art thing. The, uh, the guy's doing like painting or something. Um, maybe he's doing like a portrait painting. Portrait painting? Yeah. Something por something, something with, that with did art. not look like it was supposed to. Alright, something with art. <laughs> Let's see what this video is about. Okay. Oh my god, you guys were so right. Hi everybody, Ryan here. See, there you go. Artwork, buddy. Yeah. Good job, guys. What is that at? What is that at? 60? He's, like he's trying to do a mural or something. Damn, he's got some views, baby. This video is from 2011. 4.3 thousand views. No, those are the likes. Oh. And then on the real, oh, right, right under 600, the title. 43,000? That's joke. That's way more video, views than anything I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're in the wrong thing. <laughs> I know. I should be painting um, flags and, and yeah, chickens. Right. Like yeah, that. chickens everywhere. <laughs> and eagles. Okay, here's another one. Uh, oh, is, my what fucking God. Oh, okay. It's like, PewDiePie. We already know PewDiePie. You no, know who PewDiePie? PewDiePie yeah. You don't know who PewDiePie is? Oh, How old are you again? Just kidding. Fucking one, bro. <laughs> I'm old as fuck. So, I just learned what, what water sports meant the other day. What does water sports mean? Oh, you do, yeah, you know what it means. I don't know what it means. Oh, I found out that means when people like getting pissed on and shit. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know. I was thinking wakeboarding. Yeah, no, I was thinking like I'm into surfing. Skiing. Right, yeah. that's my first thought. So Jet said, skis. Yeah, they said water sports, and I was just like, you mean like at the Butte? Because it's kind of dry right now. <laughs> you know? I'm like, no, that means fucking pissing on people. Damn. I made it part of my bit now. Nice. But um, I didn't. Water sports? That's Or like pegging, like in my bit. Pegging? I didn't know what pegging was. <laughs> You know what I mean? Now I know because, you know, someone told me, like, oh, yeah, that's pegging. I was like, oh, is that what it's called? That's what it's called? It's like, I thought it was just putting a stake in a board yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is funny because now I say that in that bit. I'm like, yeah, she, now she texts me all the time and calls me Peggy. Uh, and everybody laughs their ass off every time I say that. That's a good one. Hell yeah. <laughs> Anyways, PewDiePie is this uh, this video game streamer okay. who got really famous on YouTube and he just posted videos of him playing, like, Minecraft or different stuff like that. So this is probably a video about him. Um, what is he doing, though? Uh, I assume that, playing video games? L I'm assuming he's playing video games, but... He what says bro fist? What do you think? Maybe he's pu um, talking a with a puppet. Anal? <laughs> uh, no, it's on YouTube. Uh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> oh, do they do anal on YouTube still? No, but they'll, yeah. they'll, 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 they'll make you seem like it is. Oh, yeah, maybe. All right, let's see what this video is. <laughs> yep, it's just a PewDiePie video. Just him talking? The PewDiePie quiz. He doesn't look like a PewDiePie to me. Nah. He looks like a, 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 a Jasper. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and this guy's famous. For 8 million views on this Jesus video. Jesus Christ. He's a, he's a really famous. I, I didn't understand that shit at first, man. I didn't get it. Really? Fuck no. I'm like, what? With all these, now I get it. Yeah. The craziest thing happened the other day. Well, well, let's go. No, let's do this. Can, let, tell me the craziest let's, thing first. Well, so um, me and Jake, or I'm at one of Jake's show. It's Jake and Christian. All of them have a show, and I was there for it. And he's showing me. He put that. Uh, he did that TikTok where he did the oh, 80s. about spelling Albuquerque. Yeah. That they say we have the we're the worst uh, education, but we're the only ones who can spell Albuquerque. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. We're both. Ta he's talking about how he's got like 500 and some views, a thousand views on it. Eight hundred eighty. No, at the one, time. Oh, okay. At the time, it was only 500. Something, okay. Right? And he, I was like, oh, so shut up. No way. Literally, he's telling me this, right? My phone goes off. My 18-year-old high school daughter sends me the video of him. Dad, check out this TikTok. And it's fucking Jake. Oh, shit. And I'm like, dude, check this shit out. She doesn't know who the fuck you are. She just sent it. And she just sent this to me because she found your shit. 
So then I took a picture of us and sent it to her, and she's like blown away. She's like, you know him? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like literally that thing was going viral at that moment, and that was the most proof of it right there. That's sick. There is no reason why that should have ever been connected. That and there dope. it is right there, bam. She yeah. saw it, and, and he made his day. He's yeah. like, are you kidding me? Well, you know. Yeah, because that <laughs> video now is at 81,000 views. And I'm just like, dude, heck yeah. You got a bunch of followers from that. Yeah. Use that momentum. Yeah. Use it. And he's gotten a lot of short jokes. Not short jokes, but short eh, jokes. I get it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Short. Like short, yeah. not short. Not yeah. short. But, um, but yeah, I need to find some of those to get some tickets. I just don't have them, man. All my shit it's is like the part of something. Thing to write. Yeah, I it's actually the had one the other day that I think would work. But I didn't fucking video. I, I I only did the audio. Oh yeah, that's 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 been my problem sometimes. Yeah. Like for the dry heat comedy, uh-huh. I got to do the open opening with Jess Wood. So Jess Wood was the headliner. Oh God, she's so fucking funny, dude. Man. She's she's got some skill. <laughs> But I didn't record it. I just audio recorded yeah. it. And I did some new stuff that I've never done before. And I was just like, fuck, I wish I would have saved it. Because it was not it was the dumbest thing ever. Like, I, I took a drink of water and I stayed quiet for like five seconds. And all I said is like, what, do you expect me to do all the work? And they went <laughs> crazy. I was like, what the fuck? And that's one of those ones where it's just, uh, it's it's like, it's not really my material. Right. All I really did was take a drink of water and just reference why no one's laughing right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. And it works so well that I wish I would have posted that somewhere. Right. And I'm just like, oh, that was a good one. So now yeah. I just have to try to find the, because I don't, I'm not trying to post all of my material online. No. Yeah. Because then all of a sudden they're just like, I came to see you. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's the TikTok joke. Oh, that's that Instagram yeah, joke. Yeah. And then and then it loses the nuance of it being brand new. Right. Like, this is new. Like, this is the newest thing ever. Like, right. But it doesn't play that way when you start putting a lot of your jokes on online. Right. But you should because that actually helps them know that, hey, this guy's funny. Right. Like It's it, a hard balance, I'm sure. You really, yeah. How do you decide what goes? Because you want your best stuff online so people like see it and go oh this is great i want to know more yeah but then they come and see you to see what they just saw online yeah. but then the same hand in person it's not it's different in person than on a video it really is you're gonna get a different um they're gonna have a better time watching it in person every time yeah. versus a video it's true right in the moment and without you know that you know being in the same room just yeah. changes it all even if opinion. you have different clothes on it doesn't feel like the same joke right you're just well, literally Sometimes you're just like that. <laughs> Sometimes it's the same joke. You, you, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you know what I mean. At some point, yeah, you're yeah, just. Like, sometimes it's like, nope, yeah, we've heard that a few uh, times. This is fun. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, say something new. That's the one thing that's that's about us is like, you know, yeah, we loving comedy and so forth as much as most of us all do. I'm sure you know, but then we go out there and see the same bits over and over again. Even, we're just like, mm. yeah. You know Honestly, I, mean? I was unless just they change all the you. time. I was just telling someone that I think it's more courageous that you go up and you fucking practice the same thing over and over because I have a complex where I think I have to do new stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. But you're really trying to hone in on that, like, good five minutes. Yeah, and then how to do the stops or how to how to pause or, like, like I do this joke where I'm just like, uh, she wanted me to have higher expectations, do better. And I used to never do that going up yeah. and it makes it hit better because they're just like what is he talking about yeah sleeping with a sister and it, yeah. just, it hits, hits so well it's crazy how just a little even just stopping yeah the, the other pauses. day i did uh i did my i did have this fat bit i do about being fat i mean because i it's what i have right <laughs> and uh i paused because i did the part um i'm, I'm sure you've heard it but uh where i say bartenders and waiters and bartenders have the same responsibility a waiter has the same responsibility as a bartender about feeding me versus giving me drinks like <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, need yeah. to calm down buddy <laughs> yeah but you know what i'm saying yeah. no, because i say you know yeah so i say that part i was like in my opinion you know they have the same response as a bartender normally it gets a laugh and it didn't so i just stopped i didn't say anything and then people like for it got quiet for a second and they started like oh shit haha i was like oh see, okay now you guys are processing i figured that out too with yeah. like some of my jokes where i was just like i i say this joke where i'm just like I'm Mexican and I can't even say what three times in Spanish without being yeah. called a racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to have a five to ten second pause <coughs> because they don't. I've done it so many times where I just say the next joke yeah. and nobody laughs. No. Until I had a guy tell me he's like, "That's funny, but you have to let them think about it first. Yeah. I stop, give them that pause, one, two chuckles. Then they're like, "Why are they laughing?" And then they think about it. Then yeah. it just hits a reaction with everybody yeah. else. Yeah. That's always so dope. But that's part of what we're learning here is where the pauses are, when to stop, when yeah. to let them marinate on it. And like there was uh there was one where I was 
rushing through it every fucking oh I, when i say i'm a fitness instructor no <laughs> right obviously that's <laughs> fucking hilarious right. right like i'm a fitness instructor and i would always just run into the like shut up let me tell you the rest people would start laughing and i'd be like and she's a blah 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 like interrupt their laugh and i didn't think about when i was when i'm doing it and then i don't i think maybe i think maybe buck d's the one that told me like take your pauses after that yeah or so i can't remember who made that comment to me and so I did, like, now I do. I, st- I say fitness instructor, and I stop. And then people will laugh. And then I move into the next part. Because if I don't, if I'm just rushing them through it, I'm yeah. not letting them sit there and enjoy it and marinate it. Yeah, because right? no- there could be another example where a person is taking a drink or something, and they're not even looking at you. So yeah. there's, like, fitness instructor. Yeah, that makes sense. This guy's a fitness. <laughs> but you already started the next joke. Exactly. Where they didn't even get to laugh the, right. the proper timing of whatever. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. I tell you what, it is getting harder to, like, keep it in that time frame. Yeah, for me, in the five minutes when I'm adding and filling the moment, uh, okay. like I, I like fuck if I just had more time, yeah, I could like build this so much better, you know. Anyways, let's go back to this. I'm sorry. No, you're cool. This this is the <laughs> point of the podcast. We have a conversation and yeah, it hits. Sure. We talk. Yeah. This next comment looks like it's a lot of fucking words. Yeah. What's an HK? What? Yeah. Last, what is an HK? My last HK order came to me West Coast USA with SG Post. And it took nine days. The package was in horrible condition and the tracking system wasn't very accurate. I missed the three day HK EMS. Nice video. Keep them coming. What the fuck is any of that? I feel like it's. Uh, no, it has to be like ordering something from like Amazon or something. So, like, the vibrator came in broken. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> pissed at my HK you broke. You put an HK, you know, or their, their fleshlight. The fleshlight didn't work. <laughs> That's, That's the brand is. name of them? Yeah, it's is HK. Show us what this video is about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Singapore post shipping. It's the post office yep. in Singapore. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> this is why... <laughs> Hobby King. Oh. <laughs> Hobby King. There you go. I saw yeah. it. Is that, oh, is that, yeah, okay, okay. I still hadn't done the math yet. Oh, yeah. HK means Hobby King. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm a little slow. Yeah, it's a good thing everyone <laughs> talking about hot kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of what it could have been. I didn't think hot kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if they were in this, <laughs> That's a good if one. If they were in this room right now, they'd all be hot kids. They'd be like, what's going here. on? <laughs> <laughs> really, really <laughs> cute costume, but, but we can't, can't see you too well. <laughs> dark. <laughs> Fuck. What is, oh, God. <laughs> I don't want even want to know what costume uh, they have let's on. See. It's too, they can't see him too well in the dark. But it's cute. Halloween. It's a but cute it's costume, cute. though. What do you a think? Halloween it's a skeleton. Like a li- how dark? A little. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm going to see. Blackface. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, the, how old is the comment? It could be. I'm <laughs> just kidding. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what this uh, video yeah, is. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, unavailable. It was definitely blackface. Yeah, or they it was like, probably pedophilia stuff. Off. You got to take that off. Why pedophilia? Dude, yeah, why? This, dude that's in my I head because it. that stupid movie. Oh, whoa, whoa, what movie were you watching? Okay, what? the, mo- the, the movie's called Child No Porn? Flower. <laughs> Flower? Oh. We saw this movie last night. It's called Flower. and it's Everybody a- don't watch the movie Flower. <laughs> watch the movie Flower. <laughs> it's about pedophilia. <laughs> it was weird because, like, it's this kid who, like, who lied about being touched by a teacher. Ah. But he did it because he saw a little girl being touched. And, but nobody would believe the little girl because the little girl was just, like, so innocent and, like, didn't feel like no one would listen to wow. her. So he goes and lies about it. He's like, it was me. Like, he touched me imp- inappropriately. And nobody believed him. And he ruined this teacher's life. But come to find out, he was actually a pedophile. Well, yeah, because he's touching the little girl. Yeah, but, but you didn't. Wow, you, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, you didn't even think about that the whole time the movie's going on. I'm no. just like, wait, is this kid lying? Yeah. Is he not lying? I don't yeah. know what's going on. He then you find, knew. yeah, you find out at the end that he was touching little girls. Man. You know, I'll tell you that, and this is the craziest thing about that kind of shit, is that that person who's been touched or whatever, having to prove it. Oh yeah, right. And face that, right? Like that whole situation for years and years and decades and decades. That's always been a thing, like. It could have very well, ha- yeah. Obviously, in most cases, it happened, yeah. Right? Maybe there's those few that it didn't, but for the most part, they have to like prove that it happened. That yeah, see, and like, it, how disheartening is that for that person that was that was taken advantage of? You know you, you kind of see it too. Is like older people get put in the sense where they they know more than a right. younger person. Yeah. So if a younger person comes up and has these accusations and stuff, they have to have the definitive proof because just being able to say like I was touched, that, and or you anything, shouldn't be able to just say anything and it's right. Uh, that's right. true it has to too. Be, true 
It's hard. It's such a balance, though, right? Like to think that they have to prove that this awful thing happened to them. Yeah. Well, right. And you when have you, you have these girls, right, that are going into their preteens and stuff that know they have power to do that. Right. Right. And then well, how do you discriminate right. that? Right. Where they know they're just using their power because they're in a place where they could be vulnerable and then ruin somebody's life. How, they but know how that. often do you think it's, what do you think the percentage of it is? Isn't being that the that whole situation? Me Too movement, right? Like, you know, somebody can up, come up to you and just be like, that was Me Too. I was I was abused and I was right. I was raped. And then all of a sudden you find out oh, it is that wasn't what that true. Is? I don't know. That's why I'm I just thought. Kidding, just kidding. <laughs> like, is that the Me Too <laughs> Is that what I, Me Too is? No. No, I'm just playing. No. <laughs> That's fucked up. I guess I shouldn't be joking around about it. We don't. Well, I mean, you, especially you. You have you have daughters. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you, you again, the rape joke thing yeah. is like, you know the aspects of your own morals yeah, yeah. and values. Yeah, exactly. It's not. You know, it's not, I would never say anything that's against my values. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, that one part of that joke is the only thing that's bad about it. Everything else about it is not in that sense. But yeah, I mean, so. you, yeah, I mean, you whatever. Know, it is what it is. It's all good. <laughs> Let's see. Thanks a lot. I love it. Yeah, it's so huge. <laughs> I felt loud. And I make uh, most of my bracelets. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make my bracelets well we figured this one out pretty yeah, I quickly think it's, is it are they making shoes i know right <laughs> this i this dude is making iphones i bet you he's he's making uh jerseys like uh, basketball jerseys there you go he and just calls them bracelets in a sweatshop because, right right that's what the bracelets are it keeps them from walking out without getting shocked you know what i'm saying keep them in the building So she basically copied somebody else's idea. Okay, I get uh, it. Yeah, that, like, this is inspired by what somebody else did. This makes <laughs> fifty bucks. <laughs> fifty bucks. Whoa, this is gonna be good. This is a car video, I bet. You think so? Yeah. I think there's fifty bucks running in the wild, <laughs> just trying to get away from the hunter. <laughs> It's <laughs> like, let me get out of here. <laughs> 50 bucks. Just like trying to escape, <laughs> ducking through trees and shit. And they're just like all like, holy shit, there's 50 but bucks. But <laughs> you would think that they would get one, you know? Yeah, I know, 50 right? 50 bucks. Oh, man. Right, let's see what this let's video is about. Is. <laughs> Fuck your bucks, right? You get the wilderness. <laughs> Golf. Oh, okay. That's random. GTI. So isn't that a car? Yeah, it is a car. Oh, oh, golf. Oh, a car. Oh, okay. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Up? The golf. This yeah. isn't Christian golf. This is golf the car. Yeah, right. <laughs> what is that? That's a Volkswagen model, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a Volkswagen. Volkswagen. Golf. That's what it Suck is. Suck it. Knew it was yeah. great for a video. Yeah, this isn't fun. That was like 50 bucks. Come yeah. on. I always do that. That's always a I mean, smart-ass comment yeah. on car videos. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Yeah, but yeah, really, yeah. it's like a classic car. That I mean, that one was probably 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it didn't have a rear axle. Yeah, it was no on front a, end. You know what I mean, like eh, that was probably what they could get for it in scrap metal. I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Everybody needs to stay <laughs> prayed up, regardless of who you are. I am proud of Candy mm -hmm. for taking time out of choo to look, capitalize choosing, choosing to make a song about prayer. Why do people feel that they need to knock others down to rise? There's, there's, there's a not there's that's right right am i reading it right See, i can't read for shit and so i'm letting you do this and <laughs> and like, dude, dude, i'm not doing not any doing better either there <laughs> don't find it didn't work for you there is <laughs> <laughs> hey I, I fucking listen to that shit <laughs> headphones i'm like yeah i'll listen to like people say words and not do a fucking thing for i'm hours. still trying to get past in glass and barreras buddy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't even know there is a not a perfect person walking this earth so let's not knock Keep knocking this woman for advocating prayer. Candy. Oh, my God. It's still going. <laughs> Candy, <laughs> if this song helps just one person, then God has a conflict. Well, we already know what this is. What he, what he this needs. This is a song about a prayer. Isn't yeah. It? Thoughts, you. You think? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm honored to say this song encouraged me. Yeah. Let's see. Stay oh, she's. Up. That's that's ca that's the girl from uh, Escape. You're old. You're young. Yeah, there used to be this group in the early '90s called Escape. They did that song. Um, God dang it! What was that song they did? Oh my God! I don't remember now. But that Ti's wife was in it. 
Oh shit. What's her name? I can't think of her name now. Anyways, but yeah, she was in that group. I, don't I didn't know, know she was a a, a Christian rapper now or <laughs> what does that make? I don't know. <laughs> is it stainless steel? Um mm. this has to be a car. Mm, no, it's a It's a kitchen appliance. Oh, okay. Oh, oh I was thinking oh. I was thinking like a, a stainless steel table in a in like a, a kitchen, like a like a like a restaurant, you know okay. what I'm saying? Is it stainless steel? Let's find think? out. I'm with you on this one. Yeah. No. None of this makes sense right now. <laughs> what is it's a survival thing. Is this a Barbie commercial? Oh, it's a knife. G.I. Joe! Oh, it's a knife. Jesus. That, see, that window wouldn't have broke like that. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> that's Duh. not how that window breaks. <laughs> Not with this knife. No, with anything. It wouldn't shatter like that at all. No, well, don't they have those like special like pen tools or whatever that it kind of would do well, that? What we used to use is we'd break off the porcelain on a spark plug and just... Oh, shit. I mean... Because you used to break into cars? <laughs> no. No. It just broke windows. <laughs> Walking down the street, breaking yeah, a window. Just, like break windows to keep the water, the glass industry in business. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, okay. If they could find the car, they could replace the window. This is what he would do: break the window and leave his cousin's card right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> we would break the window and leave the car somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Or not. Or not. Or is. I, I still think. Anyways, she's there's cool. a lot I'll talk about when I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. Not while I can still get fired from my job. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to get canceled <laughs> right now. This is when I was young. This is before I was 18. Uh, I uh, I still think she'll perform the new routine at Worlds. Is it? Yeah, that's World's Miss America. I bet you it's it's the round before you go to World. So maybe it's somebody singing their ABCs. I still think she performs the new routine at Worlds. It has to be a juggling thing. You think? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, same routine. But I, I would say it's a dance routine. Okay. Yeah. Everyone sings too, so you might be true on that one too. Yeah. Yep. Oh, gymnastics. Oh, shit. Dude, one time I stayed up all late watching gymnastics, dude. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I just was like, it was because so interesting. it's insane they could do yeah. that with their body. But, I mean, I, I was like, after like two hours of watching, like, why am I still watching this? <laughs> like, I probably need to turn this off. Uh, I know. Can I Not watch? for any reason, the fact that I'm old watching gymnastics at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's <laughs> you hilarious. Know what I, mean? I wish I could do half of what dude, they could do. it's gnarly. Oh, yeah. For like, sure. How do you even fucking right here. do that? Flip, 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 dude. Oh, Look how high that she got. Dude. Yeah, see, I couldn't do that. Ever. That is pretty intense. Alright, that, that's good so we don't get copyright stricken. Sorry. Oh, oh yeah, for the music or what? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow, see, that that's crazy. Nuts, that is crazy. Alright, let's pull up one more. Sub Zero's Sub Babyality. I oh, well, I already know what this I know what this is. is Babyality? That? Yeah. That's the part that's got me. I automatically thought Baby like Sub Zero, like, refrigerator. Or like it's not say oh it's Sub Zero oh this is Mortal Kombat yeah oh yeah so I used to I'm love thinking that. I'm thinking so in Mortal Kombat this is when they turn them into babies yeah because right? they yeah. you have these like extravagant kill moves which yeah. like fatality yeah, yeah but now there's all the other moves called babyality oh, yeah. friendshipality yeah, yeah so I, I think mean, I played it I like, think this is just him doing his Sub Zero's babyality yeah, yeah. I see yeah yeah <laughs> then this is 41 minutes we're not watching this whole video yeah no. This is bad. Oh, it shows all of them. Oh, it's her, all their babyalities? No, this is the actual fatality. Yeah. Wow. She just got throated. Did she just all over her face like yeah. this is porn? She's just like, yeah. Say so you bukkake, I'll show you blood all over my what shit. It, what is it? Well, water I'm sport, baby. Yeah, water. <laughs> I'm getting water sported. That's kind of crazy, all bloody all. <laughs> oh man, that's funny shit. <laughs> yeah, and that's just a something so we can drive because there's so much YouTube comments out oh, there. Yeah. Oh, dude, and that's, this is what this does. It brings up a random one of any video, so right. it can be any video of anything. I thought the videos were gonna be a little more um, no nope. intense. We got HK. We got yeah, we got, got <laughs> we got Happy Kings. <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> you know, I never read comments usually. Really? I, that, when I read those comments that day, were literally just because I saw what it said and I read those comments to find out what happened. Or, like, if they comment on a picture I take, but otherwise they don't go through other people's comments. Yeah. Dude, well, th that's true, too. Like, sometimes it's just that's where the, the mishap and all the fucking drama happens is in the comments. And right. you're just like, 
This dude just said hi to his grandma. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you guys getting mad? Yeah, yeah. His grandma doesn't touch him anymore. And you're just you know? like, what? Oh, this is very offensive, and I don't want anybody else to see this video, and I'm going to type everything that I need to type in a 10-fucking-paragraph thing. And you're yeah. just like, yeah, I'm not reading this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Out of that, or they post some shit that starts off as something and just some stupid, like, copy and paste again. Yeah. Or something's gonna happen. I don't know. Stupid. Makes I just, I, I don't, though. I don't normally. I don't normally. So it's just like... I never would even like like any of the comments you posted up. I've never saw them ever. You know what I mean? Or yeah. thought about what they could have been for you. Yeah. I'm now, now. I'm just gonna comment on your videos and just be provocative and stuff. Yeah. Be like, Cardinal Mad. Are you really thinking the things I'm thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll start replying back. Yeah. <laughs> like those are the only comments on those videos. Though, guarantee. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, we got one more segment for okay. here. This segment is called Rapid Fire. Ah. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a word. Oh, God. And I want you to say the first thing that pops in your head. Okay. Don't think about it. Just no, try to use your instinct thing. instincts or just like, this is what it is. All yeah. right? So just whatever you think, say the first word. All right? Okay. Music. Um, hip-hop. Food. Everything. Black. White. Car. Classic. Super. Man. Native American. Yeah. <laughs> Gold. Uh, worth money. Maze. Uh, maze. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think that movie. Um, fucking. No, 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 no. I'm not that intelligent. No. Maze uh, Runner. No, <laughs> no. The fucking Adam Sandler one with all the everybody on it, Chris Rock and all that shit. Funny people. Grown ups. Grown ups, yeah. and it was like it's a maze. Yeah. <laughs> maze. I'm good with the maze. Right, we, got, we got two more. <laughs> okay. Fast. Um, not me. Drugs. They're usually good. Uh, nice. See, there I you mean, go. I've heard. <laughs> that, and, that, and that's rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. everybody that comes on the podcast, I'll say these exact same words, right. and just to see how you think about these words. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many people say white when you hear black. <laughs> oh, almost everybody. I'm sure. <laughs> it is. You, you. I've heard well, some some weird ones. I've heard one that says not a color. For right. that one, and I've also heard somebody say gray. Okay. But every other time it's white. That's it's kind of gray. It's kind of gray to say it's, gray. It's they so make gray. Well, black and white makes gray. Yeah. Right? So I mean. So they kind of did say white. Put them together. <laughs> Said white ultimately. <laughs> Dude, Cardo. Yeah. Thank you for coming to the absolutely, podcast. Absolutely, man. This is fun. That's pretty much the the end of this bad boy. But we got to have you on again. There's like, always something to talk about. Oh man, I don't, like I know how to not shut up. And you, do that, that's the beauty. Like two weeks can pass, something can happen. We're gonna talk for another hour about yeah, some shit. So yeah, for sure, man. Well, um, sure. you want to give any plugs or anything where they can um, find you? Well, all my stuff is basically, you know, I got Cardo Mad on Instagram, Cardo Mad Photography on Instagram, Mad Cardo Clothing, and Holy Cardo shit. Mad TV. On YouTube and Instagram, um, I'd like to plug you know, fisheye photography, uh, double barrel photography, uh, Roots, um, Rudy. Uh, he's uh, I was like the Boulevard movie podcast. Roots. <laughs> no, he does the Boulevard podcast. He's helped me out a lot. Nice. Um, and it's, I can't remember if he's going by the Boulevard now or what on YouTube, but he actually did this small documentary on me for. Uh, I was in a, an exhibit in Taos, and they did a documentaries on everybody to show to like high school kids and college kids. Right, that are in art programs. Oh, nice. So he did this video for me, and he, me and him worked together on a lot of projects. So I just want to make sure I shout him out. Nice. And then uh, uh, Beaches Lowriders, I've been working with him a lot. Uh, be up in Denver for them, um, and Custom Vita. And that's it, man. Yeah. Just I got a lot going on. I'm yeah. I'm in a lot of different genres. Right? Yeah, I, I can't remember half of that stuff you yeah. just said, but I make don't sure even remember. What, I'm sure I missed a million things. Just follow Cardo Mad. Yeah, Cardo Either. Mad Photography. Follow it, Cardo Mad for my comedy stuff. And watch out! I'm hopefully get some more shows. Soon. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. Yeah. The you, September twentieth, right? September twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Um, Lizard Tail for sure. That one's yeah, so. coming up, and then whatever else is coming up. Hopefully, I, I'm hoping I made it into the Albuquerque Comedy Festival. Oh, you still haven't heard anything about that no, yet? No, I have. So maybe I haven't. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I'm in the Four Corners one too. I, I submitted to that. Oh, so okay. No. There's hey, if I don't, I don't. Uh, hey, I'll it's maybe your first next time. Year. Yeah, yeah it's your next first year, time. You know what I mean? So I, I totally, <laughs> I totally spaced on the whole uh, Albuquerque f Funny Festival because I was in it last year. Uh -huh. But I like, w I waited at the last minute and I did it again this year and yeah. I fucking missed it. Oh, so no. I'm hoping they have another kind of promotion where I can upload something. Right. But other than that, I mean, you guys know what to do. Muse Me TV. There you go. Muse J Me TV. Check it out. Yeah, just Google me. You'll find me. Also got a couple shows coming. We got the roast battle coming up uh, July 20th. And we also, I got a show at uh, Headliners 505, which was Kevin Kennedy. A couple of other hits. That's the 17th. So... Hey, yes. support local comedy, everybody. Local arts. Arts, period, yeah, right? Everything. Whether it be music, 
um, paintings, the art walks on Friday nights. Yeah. I hear that. I've, I've yet to be to one. Yeah, dude, they're popping. It's they're, popping. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's a fucking there's block a lot party of, every fucking first month. Yeah, and there's a lot of talented people here, man. And and I think that us all working together and all our com- our comedy community, music community, art communities, all that stuff working together instead of against each other is going to help us get seen. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing people need to like realize. If we all work together, the bigger the group is, the easier is it for us to get seen. Because that's what we want. Yeah, dude. Come on. They filmed Stranger Things here. Yeah. This shit's popping. We could get seen if we all work together. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, hey, thank you, everybody. No, Appreciate th- you, thanks man. Thanks again, man. Fun. Uh, you guys, make sure to look out for more stuff coming soon. Shout out to Dulcie for putting her ones and twos in, <laughs> in, the, in there. And everybody who listened, man. We there appreciate you. Go. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Peace. I'm out. Peace out.